2015 Southland Conference Baseball Tournament from Constellation Field in Sugarland, Texas. This is an elimination game between the McNeese State Cowboys and the Southeastern Louisiana Lions. Chris Mykoski with you in the ESPN broadcast booth in Sugarland, joined by a couple of the great voices here in the Southland Conference. Nichols play-by-play -play man, Mike Wagenheim, and Northwestern State radio voice, Patrick Netherton. And before we get into this matchup, guys, let's review what we just saw. Northwestern State winning 4-3 to three over Nichols in an elimination game. And, Mike, the Colonels had a great regular season. So many highlights, wins over LSU, sweeping ULL, and obviously a, a bunch of great wins in the Southland Conference. But when you go 0-2 to close things out in the conference tournament, that's going to sting for a long time. Yeah, it definitely puts a damper on things. And the Colonels back-to-back 30-win campaigns for the first time since 1992-1993. But no postseason wins to show for it in the last couple of years. So some retooling to be done. Probably a different approach to the postseason going forward for head coach Seth Thibodeau. Just, just too many opportunities squandered over the last couple of days here. Patrick, uh, the Demons still have a lot of work to do to fight out of the loser's bracket. Brand Brandon Smith goes a good number of innings. I don't imagine he's spent, though. He's had a long, long distance there during the regular season, and the Demons have plenty of other weapons that make you think they could make a run at this thing. Well, the thing I think that was most important for NSU is they've only used one bullpen arm, and their bats finally woke up. Granted, it was one inning, but they finally stringed together some hits, which they couldn't do against Houston Baptist in the opener. Now you're looking at you've only used two starters. You lose your, cl your closer, who probably can come back if you get to, to Saturday mm -hmm. and at least throw you maybe an inning, an inning or two if you need him. I think the Demons are pretty well set. The question is, winning five games, how do you go with that fourth and fifth starter? That's going to be the real question. All right, let's take a look at the Southland Conference tournament bracket and see how teams advanced into this circumstance against Southeastern and McNeese State, both in a loser's bracket situation, an elimination game here that was supposed to start at noon, but starting a little bit late here in Sugar Land, if we have the bracket available. It is McNeese and Southeastern again playing with their tournament lives on the line as we wait for the bracket, guys. These two teams, again, stellar seasons, and uh, we'll have to see which one goes home at the end of the day. This is the other side of the bracket. Um, so this is what we just I'm saw sorry, here. Excuse me. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all thrown off here. This is what we just saw here between Nichols and and Northwestern State, Nichols falling out. And then when you get to the other side, that's the game that we are about to play right now. And apologies for my confusion. Five games of baseball. I think my brain is already going to mush. But uh, Southeastern and McNeese in an elimination game. The winner will get the loser of the Islanders and Bearcats later today. Let's look at our impact players, starting off, Patrick, with Billy Summers from MSU. Well, it was, it was tough to, to pick anyone that was an impact player from last night. Uh, really a struggle for McNeese. Summers having a nice game, though, two for four, drove in the lone run. The key for the, the Cowboys is going to be don't get behind like they did last night against Sam. And for the Southeastern Lions, Carson Kreitz, one of the few offensive bright spots for the Lions last night. Yeah, we see Kreitz, uh, actually some of uh, Carson Kreitz, you know, it, it's Jacob Seward gets all the attention, the Southland Conference Player of the Year, the leadoff man for Southeastern, but it's Kreitz out of that two spot that makes a lot happen. He had an RBI double in the ball game yesterday. There's Kreitz right there. And really, a second table setter for Southeastern Louisiana. When you have Seward and Kreitz at the top of your order, that's a one-two punch. It really can't be matched throughout the Southland Conference. Southeastern Louisiana... I think we'll talk about a lot during the ball game, their opportunity for postseason. Should they fall tonight and go 0-2 in the Southland, they've had such a great year. They're receiving votes in national polls, but you never want to leave it to chance and that at-large bid. I, I guess it's really a 50-50 shot should they fall today to get in to the NCAA tournament. Well, they hit the magic number, Chris. They got to 40 wins, and that's the most important thing. Hard to deny any teams with 40 wins, especially in a good top-to-bottom league like the Southland. It's going to be hard-pressed to keep them out of the tournament. All right, guys, with the play-by-play, -play, again, we'd like to showcase a couple of the great radio voices throughout this league in the Southland. From Nichols State, it's Mike Wagenheim, and from Northwestern State, Patrick Netherton. Take it away, guys. 
Up, Andrew Giat will lead things off for the Cowboys. He'll take a strike from right-hander Jake Johnson on the outer half of the plate. And we're underway here between McNeese and Southeastern here in this elimination game. The winner survives until tomorrow. The loser goes home tonight. A little bit outside to Giat and Patrick Andrew Giat, another one of those very nice table setters in this league. And with Joe Provenzano batting behind him, the freshman of the year, good top of the order for the Cowboys. Find a way to get in the scoring position and score runs. Up and down the league, you're finding that. Johnson missing outside. And you know, the key, I think, Mike, for, for this McNeese team is you got to shake off a, a five-run inning that you gave up early against Sam Houston last night. Find a way to get success early. Yeah, you wonder if the Lions were stunned, and they shouldn't have been because Trevor Belichick for Texas A&M Corpus Christi is one heck of a pitcher among the top two or three arms in this league, but still you're the number one seed. You have all the momentum coming in, and then you fall on opening day, and you've got to bounce back and do it quickly. Called strike to Giat. The count run full here to the McNeese leadoff man. And that's a good start, obviously, for McNeese. Anytime you can get the pitch count up early, it helps. Let's everyone else see pitches. Giat staying alive. Count remains three and two. McNeese coming into this Southland tournament as the four seed. Fell to Sam Houston State last night. And as you mentioned, uh, Patrick, never really got things going against Andrew Godale and company. Never really in that ball game. They lost five to one. Didn't score until the ninth. Giat base hit through the left side. And McNeese with a good start to their afternoon. Perfect. And Giat second in the Southland in stolen bases. You would have to anticipate he'd be on the move at this point. Already set the career record for McNeese in hits. Is closing in on the career record for stolen bases. Don't be surprised if Giat doesn't get on the move quickly. Giat having a great career with McNeese and named a finalist for the Senior Class Award this year, which is a very prestigious award in college baseball. Just a very all-encompassing award, community activities, classroom activities, and, of course, on the field performance as Joe Provenzano takes a strike down the middle here from Jake Johnson. Provenzano, Southland freshman of the year. Good find for the young head coach from the Cowboys, Justin Hill. Could be two here for the Lions. Can they double him up? No. Beat it out by a half a stride. Well, that's what helps when speed helps you at the top of the order and keeps you out of a double play early. Giot obviously not on the move, and that's why I kind of anticipated he would be. Justin Hill's going to come out and do a little arguing here. Uh, with our second base umpire, Thomas Walkowiak, and obviously looking at the neighborhood play being the issue in this one. Well, it looks like they called interference because of Provenzano was oh. heading back to the dugout. Well, there you go. Now, now I see why Justin Hill's arguing. So interference, the call, which obviously negates both guys. So now two outs, and the base is empty, and that obviously changes the complexion of the inning entirely. Not sure if we'll be able to get another look at that play at second base or not. Connor Lloyd at the bat. Here for McNeese, their shortstop. They'll take a strike, and it's 0-1. Lloyd, a 323 hitter, 10 doubles, 29 batted in. Doesn't strike out a whole lot, only 14 Ks on the air. Veteran in the McNeese lineup. Seems like he's been there forever. Soft fly ball into left field. Here comes Ryan Byers to make the play, and the side is retired, so the Cowboys get that leadoff hit, but the runner's interference negates any momentum. Half inning in the books. It's a Cowboys nothing. The Lions coming to bat. This is the Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN. If you're looking for a car that drives you and takes the wheel right from your very hands, This isn't that car. The first and only car with direct adaptive steering. The 328 horsepower Q50 from Infinity. Thanks. FedEx has solutions to enable global commerce that can help your company grow steadily and quickly. Cut it out. See you tomorrow.
Bottom half of the first inning, an elimination game here from Sugar Land, Texas. McNeese State and the regular season champion, Southeastern Louisiana Lions. Southeastern coming into the bat here. Facing right-hander Bryce Kingsley here for the Cowboys. Kingsley, the number two man in the rotation here for McNeese State, but he's been around the block and some postseason experience under his belt. Well, Kingsley, the right-hander. Facing Jacob Seward, Carson Kreitz, and Daniel Midget here in the bottom half of the first inning. A look at Constellation Field here in Sugar Land. Great selection for the Southland Tournament once again this year. Back here after a one-year absence. As the league's player of the year, Jacob Seward to lead things off, and he'll take a strike down the middle. Seward, just a dangerous player. 362 hitter, 35 driven in. Ground ball to second. Joe Provenzano over to Connor Crane for the put out. One away here, and he'll bring up Carson Kreitz. Pitch on the inner half of the plate. Seward to ground out weekly. A whole lot of pitchers have done that this year. Here's Kreitz at the bat. Sophomore from Amarillo, Texas. Kreitz batting 324. He'll take one in the dirt. Six doubles, three long balls, 29 batted in for Kreitz, and 11 stolen bases as well. Here's a 1-0 from Kingsley. Fly ball right center on the move is Giot, and that's over his head. It'll get all the way to the wall. Extra bases for Carson Kreitz. He's turning for three. And the relay throw dropped by Joe Provenzano. Carson Kreitz with a three-bagger, his fourth of the year. Showing off his speed there. Alan, look. Mike, this is the best offense in the Southland Conference. Don't, uh, don't get it wrong. Also a misplay off the wall by Giot, which helped to allow Kreitz. I think Kreitz was slowing up, heading into second base, and then as soon as he saw that that, uh, that ball came back and bounced back past Giot, he immediately turned and took off and headed for third. That's one of those things about playing in a neutral site. You really only get about a couple hours on the field on Tuesday. Real no work during the week. And so you don't really get a great feel for how the ball plays off the walls here and in the crevices as Daniel Midget steps up to bat. The switch hitting DH. He'll take one outside for a ball. A chance here with a runner on third and one out for Southeastern to take the early lead. This should get the job done. Roller to second will bring the run home, and it's one to nothing. Lions on the ground out RBI by Daniel Midget chasing in Carson Price. Yeah, in the first inning, Justin Hill, the McNeese skipper, just content to take the out for the run. Had the infield back. Middle infielders are back. Anything hit to the middle infielders was going to score the run, and that's an excellent job of doing your job by Daniel Midget to drive in the run. Hit it exactly where he needed to. 46th RBI of the year for Midget. We bring up the senior, Kevin Carr, the Lion first baseman at Chandler, Arizona. 329, hit a good for second on the club. Leads a team with 14 doubles. He'll take a strike here from Kingsley. And that's exactly the start a team like Southeastern needed. Look, everyone has a good Friday night guy. Everyone's got that guy. So to be able to turn around and get an early lead in the loser's bracket game is a huge advantage. Just missed outside. Kingsley making his 13th start, a 4-5-5 ERA. Gives up about one hit per inning. 52 strikeouts, 17 walks. Drives this one to left field. Back goes Lewis Gilbo. It's going to bang off the wall. Standing double for Kevin Carr. Almost got that one out of here. Carr lines up. Just a great piece of hitting. Got a ball high and on the inside half that he could drive. And I, you, I like you, was waiting to see if that one was going to have enough to get out. And uh, I don't want to say poorly played out in left field, but certainly Lewis Gilbo, I think, could have made a better effort at it. He was close, but I think he might have thought off the bat that that was leaving as well. 
Two out base runner here for Brett Hoffman, senior third baseman. Kingsley, former Louisville slugger, freshman All-American, delivers his strike on the outer half of the plate. Kingsley, terrific debut back in 2013. He was in the top ten of the league in ERA, wins, innings pitched, complete games, and opponent batting average. Kind of tailed off last year, finished with a 6-2-9 ERA, though he did pick up a win at Southeastern in May of last year. Yeah, battled injury all year last year. One ball, one strike as he misses down and away. Talking to Bruce Merchant, another of the great voices of, of the uh, Southland Conference, their play-by-play -play man for McNeese, he said it just feels like McNeese is tired at the end of the season. Feels like they're really struggling down the stretch. They got into the tournament, and he feels like he's not sure they've got the energy to battle out of the loser's bracket. We shall see today. Two balls and one strike now. McNeese dropped two out of three to conclude the regular season at Central Arkansas. They swept a non-conference series from Grambling prior to that and swept Stephen F. Austin prior to that and then took a series from Nichols. So it seemed like they had a pretty good conclusion to the regular season. 2-1 pitch out over the plate but fouled on back. 2-2 two two to Hoffman. Also important, I think, Mike, to if you're Southeastern, if you can pick up any extra runs you get, uh, we saw in the first game today, Nichols got a run in the bottom of the first inning, ultimately a run in the bottom of the second inning, but could never get the second and third runs, couldn't turn it into a crooked number uh, in any of those innings. If Kingsley's able to limit the damage, that's a win for McNeese here. If Southeastern put at least one more up, that's a win for the Lions. Wholeheartedly agree, the 2-2 down and in. Cameron Toole, catcher for McNeese. Hoffman looking to drive in car here. One run on the board for the Lions. On a ground out RBI by Daniel Midget. Chasing in Carson Kreitz after a one out triple. Payoff pits. Fouled off. Yeah, you mentioned, Mike, the limited time these teams have to get in here and practice, to get in here and get familiar. They take in and out on the first day of the tournament, but don't take any in and out after that. And you wonder. You know, the conditions are a little bit different in the morning than they were in the afternoon when McNeese played their first game, and you wonder how that's affecting the outfielders. We saw the carom off the wall that got past Giot, Gilbo not really able to get to that ball and left as well. Kingsley trying to put him away and does with a nice breaking ball. Now Bryce Kingsley gets out of the inning but gives up a run on a couple of hits. We've played one full frame here from Sugarland. The Lions up 1-0. This is the Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN. Mackey State and Southland Conference baseball fans, your vote is needed. Help support Mackey Southfielder Andrew Guillot by logging on to www. Dot SeniorClassAward.com and voting for the senior as the nation's top student athlete. Voting is open through June 8th and you can vote up to three times per day. So act today and vote for Magnesis to Andrew Giat as this year's Senior Class Award recipient. I'm Andrew Giat and I approve this message. Right-hander Jake Johnson, junior for Southeastern Louisiana, back to work as we enter the second inning of play here from Constellation Field in Sugarland, Texas. One to nothing. The Lions with the advantage. Johnson, a Juco transfer. He'll work to the middle of the order here, beginning with Billy Summers. The DH for McNeese, who takes a strike off speed. Saw during the timeout, McNeese's Andrew Guillot recognized as a class finalist, senior class finalist. That prestigious award. Johnson missing outside. One ball, one strike to Summers. Johnson, the male athlete of the year at Neosho County Community College last season. Helped that club to the Juco World Series. Change up, chop towards second. Tough play here for Kreitz. Got him. Made it look fairly routine in the end.
Didn't rush it. The Summers retire. There's one away. Carson Kreitz, second sacker for the Lions. Here's Connor Crane at the bat for McNeese. Knee-high fastball for the strike. Crane, junior from the fine state of Colorado, a 274 hitter with eight home runs on the year, 39 driven in. And that's an interesting discussion, Mike, about eight home runs. You have uh, multiple guys with at least six home runs on the roster for uh, McNeese. You have a couple of guys that have over four home runs, including one with eight for the Lions. The reduction of the seams in the baseball was the huge story after the BB core bat and the dead bat era for the last couple of years. They reduced the seams down to the minor league seams. And it really has shown some jump in offense. I'd like to see a little bit more, but where it's at now, I like. Yeah, finding a, a happy medium in there was really the key. It used to be college baseball. You're constantly playing 14 to 12 games. Right. Just such an imbalance. They went so far in the other direction that the, that the offense really was at a complete disadvantage. So I think they've, they found, for the most part, a good balance at this point as Crane goes down on strikes. Two away. <laughs> It's a really nice one-two delivery right there. Got him just a little change. Came back and broke in at him. Johnson gave up a hit in the first, but a runner's interference call on an attempted double play ball. Got him out of the jam. Here's James Cantu at the plate, and he'll take a strike down the middle. Cantu, the McNeese right fielder. Lions up a run here in the second. Loser this game goes home. The winner plays tomorrow. Nothing in two to count. You know, that's what makes the offensive interference such a big deal in the first inning, Mike, is because that could change the entire complexion of this game. Southeastern with the runner's interference gets two outs, nobody on in the first. Next thing you know, this is a completely different confident squad. Now Christ gets to it, but he'll have to put it in his pocket. That'll be an infield hit for Cantu. And as we, you and I both know, both Louisiana guys around that Southeastern Louisiana program, there may not be a more confident team in, co in the Southland Conference than Southeastern Louisiana. They have, ever since J.R. Teague's really got that program going uh, the last several years, and since Matt Reiser's been there for the last couple, they, have, they really have a very high level of confidence. They come out with a swagger when they hit the baseball diamond, and they believe they're going to win. So when you get some early success, that helps them a lot, keeps that swagger going. Yeah, they're good, and they know they're good. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Lewis Gilbo batting here. And that's why we said in the, in the pregame that this is likely a team that would end up in the, the NCAA tournament no matter what happens. Obviously, you would like to see – as a conference for them to get in, you'd like to see them win a few more games before they ultimately be, are eliminated. But 41 and 16 is still 41 and 16. This one hit into the right field corner, heading out of play. Gilbo finished up the regular season on a six game hitting streak. Juco transfer from Austin, Texas. Jake Johnson trying to put away the pokes to the corner. Strong throw from Brett Hoffman. Now the side retired and two out singles all the Cowboys get. We played an inning and a half from Sugarland. Lions up 1-0 here in the Southland Tournament on ESPN. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates, we're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With locations in Texas and Louisiana and still growing, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. Southland Conference is 4,200 student athletes from 13 member institutions. The 
competing in 17 NCAA Division I sports. We are Southland Strong. Fans from all over the Southland Conference making the trek to Sugarland, Texas, including many from the Lake Charles area. Back here with you from Constellation Field. Elimination game on day two of the Southland Tournament. Southeastern Louisiana, the regular season champs, leading McNeese one to nothing. The Lion faithful here as well in full force. Bryce Kingsley, Cowboy right-hander, working the first pitch to Kenan Menard. Got him to flare it out to right for out number one. Well, it's an easy trip up uh, just across west on I-10 here to Houston. It's a little bit longer of a haul to come all the way from Hammond, Louisiana, or Hammond, America. Hammond, America, indeed. That's what they call it. Here comes Julian Service to the plate for the Lions. Canadian in his junior campaign. Guess you can call that Sarnia, Canada. You can, if you like. I'm a, I'm amazed, you know, looking at the the batting averages for Southeastern because even with the the newer lower seams on the ball, there are a lot of teams that don't have a lot of guys hitting over 300. Now there's some guys that will flash the occasional power, but there's not a ton of guys hitting for huge averages all up and down the Southland lineup. You look at at Southeastern. They've got guys, six of them, hitting over 300 and one more at 299 in the regular rotation. Yeah, there's really no weak spot in that order and no chance to really pitch around anybody. You, don't, you can't exhale if you're a pitcher. No chance to breathe whatsoever. Two balls and a strike to service, batting out of the seventh spot. Not only do they bat it well, but they run so well as well. Oh, knuckler to Provenzano. There are two gone here in the line second. <laughs> We've already seen a couple of interesting hops to second baseman today. That one looked like it hit the collar. Great job by Provenzano to wait and not let it spin sideways on him. Chris Eads out of Slidell, Louisiana. North of New Orleans coming up to bat here. When your eight-hole hitter is 6'3", 240, you're doing something right. You look at that lion bench. It looks like a professional team over there. It looks like a minor league team, the way these guys are built. I wish they wouldn't wear camouflage jerseys, though. It's really tough to see them out there. You're welcome. I can't even see who's at bat. Exactly. One ball, one strike. It's just a pair of pants up there. Kingsley missing. Southeastern Louisiana. Establishing a new record, 41 wins this year for their program. Amazing. And haven't, haven't won the Southland regular season. That's what was, was amazing. With all the success they've had the last several years with J.R. Teagues when he got things going, now the athletic director at Southeastern, all the success had, had not won the regular season. Sam Houston State just had such a great run in there. Full count here to Eads. Kingsley gave up a run on a couple of extra base hits back in the first. To the shortstop, Connor Lloyd. And Kingsley adds himself a 1 2 3 second. We'll head to the third when we come back to Sugarland, Texas. This is a Southland Conference tournament on ESPN. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah! I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We're never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. For all the nevers in life, State Farm is there.
upon us here from Sugarland, Texas. McNeese trying to stay alive here against southeastern Louisiana. The Pokes down one to nothing as they come back to the bat here against southeastern right-hander Jake Johnson. Beautiful day for baseball out here. We had some rain in the forecast yesterday and it stayed away. Got more in the forecast for later on tonight. Fortunately, uh, Patrick, there is no accountability for meteorologists. They can be wrong all the time and still keep on going. I, I will say this. The only guys that, that can be less successful and be Hall of Famers are baseball players. They can get a hit a third of the time they're in the Hall of Fame. Matt Gallier leading things off here for McNeese State. Swings and misses at the Johnson offering. 8-9-1 batters due up here for the Pokes. Johnson has surrendered a couple of hits. Nobody has reached scoring position yet. Downstairs to Gallier. And when you said we missed rain yesterday, we missed rain by about a half a mile. We watched the storm cloud go right across the face of the outfield here at Constellation Field. It missed us by, I, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating when I say half a mile, nice big thunderstorm that just went cruising by us in the outfield. Higher power watching over Constellation Field this weekend. By the way, that has been a huge story this year all across the Southland Conference, rainouts. The weather has just wreaked absolute havoc. Uh, series after series getting changed to double headers, getting canceled, and Corpus had their series to end the season canceled entirely this year. And they came right back and beat Southeastern. Clearly <laughs> needed the rest. rest. I guess so. Gallier going on strike, second punch out for Jake Johnson here. Change speeds on him. Brings up the catcher, Cameron Toole, who was named to the Johnny Bench Award watch list this year. That goes to the top catcher in the nation after the season. One of three catchers from the South that named to that list. Clayton Johnson fielding his position two away. That's kind of a, a little bit of a screwball action when it got to him. It actually hopped back toward him and into his glove. It was a little wide of him when it hit. He did a nice job lowering the glove, getting that up. I'm always amazed at pitchers and their reaction time with the glove hand because obviously they're the closest guy to the plate. Here's Andrew Gia taking low for ball one. Gia. Around 250 hits. A very prestigious career at McNeese. Smokes this one foul. Look out. Roberto Vaz has to get out of the way of that one. He's been a great addition, by the way. The third base coach. Uh, one of the great personalities in this game as well. Uh, you see Vaz there as we, we scroll back around. Vaz has been a heck of an addition for this McNeese team this year, first season. Giyak grounds to Kenan Menard. Close play and just did get him. Well, Johnson has his first one, two, three inning. We're midway through three here from Sugarland. Still one nothing Lions. This is the Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN. When you're looking for the perfect award or branding solution, look no further than Levy Marketing and Awards. A true innovator in the art of recognition, Levy Marketing and Awards is a U.S. custom awards manufacturer with over 50 years of experience providing guaranteed personal service and high-quality production catering to athletics and collegiate sports. Log on to LevyMarketingAwards.com or call toll-free 855-879-5389 to create your lasting impression today. Levy Marketing and Awards, providing streamlined solutions to meet all of our clients' business needs. Cheer for the stumbles. The he should have had bats. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. Gorgeous day on the rocking chairs out in the seats here from Constellation Field in Sugar Land. one nothing Lions. Boy, they thought of everything here, Pat. That's right in front of us, by the way. I, hey, I think I, I have enough cord here. I think I can actually do the broadcast from the rocking chair outside. I may do that. Ryan Byers will lead things off. Sophomore from Ponchatoula, Louisiana, right near Hammond. A home base for southeastern Louisiana. That's a strike middle in. 
Got rocking chairs out here. There's a merry-go-round beyond the left field wall. And there's a, and there's a pool in here somewhere, isn't there? There is a pool, I think, out there near near left center. Yep. Yeah, it's unbelievable. They got everything here. And this and this is affiliated with uh, the the Atlantic League. I mean, the Atlantic. Uh, I mean, come on. Uh, you're how is this not the Houston Astros affiliation right here? This is perfect. Oh, two missed outside. Done a great job with this facility and building this independent franchise. One and two. Here to Byers, a nine-hole hitter for the Lions, their left fielder. Bryce Kingsley coming off a one, two, three second. It looks like he's got a lead off out here as Connor Lloyd slings along to Connor Crane for out number one. Nice job, first baseman Crane, holding the foot on the bag long enough. Throw is a little bit wide from Lloyd. Brings up Jacob Seward. Grounded out to second base to begin his day. What a player this kid is. Scary is just a sophomore. Yeah, that's, the player of the year is a sophomore in the Southland Conference. The hitter of the year is a junior. This league is pretty set up. The flip side of that is the expectations that are going to be on him next year. Absolutely. Well, if your if your player of the year is a sophomore, you better come back and be player of the year as a as a junior and a senior as well. One ball, one strike. So we're trying to butt his way on. Yep, Kingsley fields his position well. We've seen the pitchers doing a nice job of that, keeping the gloves down low. I'm always amazed that they can get back on balance that quickly and be ready and able to, to uh, flip those. And then my favorite part about pitchers is they always throw underhanded to first base if they get the opportunity to. Man can throw it 94 from on top of a hill, but he's throwing it 20 feet. He's got to underhand it. I understand it, though. Make sure you make the play. Base knock for Carson Kreitz. He tripled and scored in the first. Makes a big turn here. And scampers back to the bag. Carson Kreitz, two for two. I've seen some pitchers field the ball and run to first. Yes, to make the play. <laughs> just, stand, just, just stand on the bag themselves. Go touch the bag yourself. Kreitz apparently going to be the table setter today already. Two for two. Had that double into right center and now the single. Uh, but again, if you're, you're Kingsley, pitcher for McNeese, do this with two outs. Don't let these rallies start because the, the moment you let a southeastern Louisiana player on to start off an inning, trouble begins. That's when they start playing, have the ability to play small ball, which they do exceptionally well. Here's Daniel Midget. Now in your neck of the woods, Shreveport. Captain Shreve High product. Very comfortable in green and gold, for that matter. Didn't have to even change school colors to leave the Gator program. Dirt there by Cameron Tool. Yet. We'll mention all Southland Conference last season. He didn't play much as a freshman, but worked his way in the lineup. Started 46 games last year. Yeah! Great heads up base running by Kreitz at first. Rounded second, looked immediately at Lloyd, saw the ball deflect off the glove of Lloyd at short. Also, nice, nice piece of hitting going inside out for Midget. And unfortunately for McNeese, Connor Lloyd is not six feet tall, or else he would have made that play easily. Right, so it's from corner to corner. Lions looking to put together a two out rally here in the third. They already have a run on the board. Kevin Carr coming up to the plate. Call. Colorado with a wall banging double back to the first. Yeah, Connor Lloyd at short goes 5'7. Needed to be about 5'9 for that one. Also, don't be surprised if Matt Riser doesn't get something going here with runners at the corners. You do have part of the order. If you get thrown out at second, trying to perhaps a double steal of some kind. You still come back with your cleanup hitter at the plate. So don't be surprised if Midyet perhaps gets on the move here, tries for a double steal to at least swipe second. 
This is a Lion team that has 119 stolen base attempts. They have four different guys who have double-digit steals on the year. Midyet, 7 of 11 at first base. Not to worry about here for Bryce Kingsley. Only guy you need to concern yourself with is Carr at the plate. Behind 3-0. Car taking all the way. Brett Hoffman due up next. Aaron Freeman, a little gift there, I think, for Kingsley. Pitch looked like it was a little bit high and outside, but on 3-0, if it's anywhere in the vicinity, it's going to be a strike. Looks like they changed the count here on us. 2-1 the count. Well, if the pitch was waved off, regardless, this one dumped into right, base hit, short hopping out to Cantu, no play at third, however, at second, they got him by a country mile. Score the run as Kreitz crosses from third on the RBI hit by Kevin Carr, but Carr got greedy and he's cut down at second by the third baseman, Matt Gallier. But Southeastern doubles their lead, it's 2 to nothing Lions after three. This is a Southland tournament on ESPN. Yeah, I really admire my mother, despite what people said. She bought me a sewing machine, and she let me play with dolls, and that, that was something that was kind of growing up culturally. It was quite unacceptable, and uh, she really um, dared to let me be different. <laughs> up two to nothing and has some work to do here as we turn the play-by-play -play over to Patrick Netherton. Thank you Wags, appreciate it. Justin Hill, the second year skipper for McNeese. A lot of great young coaches in this league as McNeese will have two, three, and four in the order. Joe Provenzano, mentioned him, the freshman of the year in the Southland Conference, will lead things off. He was guilty, he was out on the offensive interference down at second base back in the first inning. Count runs to two and oh. This McNeese squad, 32-24 and 24 after their loss last night. The four seed in the tournament as all the top four seeds fell in the first day of the Southland tournament. You mentioned Justin Hill, really done a nice job restoring some stability to the uh, Cowboy program. They had 30-win year last year. That was their first in five seasons, and they repeated again this year. 2-1 swung on and missed. Beautiful change up there. Yeah, Hill, it's amazing how many of these head coaches, and Riser is another one. He's in his second year taking over a very successful program. Amazing how many of these coaches have moved around within the Southland Conference. Little ground ball easily handled by Kevin Carr on one knee. Provenzano's retired for the second time. We'll bring up Connor Lloyd. The McNeese the shortstop flew out to left his first time up. Shallow left field, nice play by Ryan Byers out there on the run. Lloyd almost taking care of business, not allowing that second run to score in the last inning, but not quite tall enough at shortstop to get that flare over his head as he knocks one right past his third base coach, Roberto Vaz. A very patriotic American flag arm sleeve there from Connor Lloyd. Hashtag America. A one misses high and wide. Lloyd is certainly a guy, and we've seen this. You've got a guy at Nichols. We've got a guy at Northwestern State. So many shortstops in this league that are absolute gems defensively, and Lloyd's one of those as the 1-1 one -one hits for strike two. A lot of guys that field their position exceptionally well all up and down this league. 
That one a little loop. Looks like it'll just get fouled down the left field line. Connor Lloyd really been the heart and soul of this Cowboy Club. Only the seventh player in school history to reach 200 hits. A lot of guys that Justin Hill is going to be looking to replace next year. Lloyd, chief among them. Giot, another one that he's going to have to try to uh, find replacements for. It's a, it's a pretty veteran McNeese squad that Hill's got this year, which is part of the reason why he was able to guide them to a fourth-place finish. The amazing thing to me is, Mike, that there were four, the top four seeds, all from the state of Louisiana, and all lost yesterday. That's going to be a base hit right back up the middle. Lloyd, nice piece of hitting, took a high outside pitch and just flared it right back through the middle. So McNeese has someone aboard. First time they've had a runner aboard since the second inning. Cantu with a single back in the second with two outs. And the first time since the first inning they've had anyone aboard with fewer than two outs. We'll see what the Cowboys get going with Billy Summers, the designated hitter. Summers grounded out to second to lead off the second inning. 0 for 1 on the day. Southeastern had the bases empty with two outs last inning and put together three consecutive hits to produce a run. Swing and a miss. Nice job. Chris Eads behind the dish going down to take care of that one in the dirt. In what we assume would be a low-scoring game, most squads have at least two very good pitchers Friday and Saturday nights. All of the runs, all the extra bases, everything very important. And that a beautiful changeup from Johnson. And just that quickly, Summers is down nothing in two. Sun finally making an appearance this morning. I believe it's the first time we've seen it today. 0-2, swing and a miss. Three change-ups. He got him on all of them. Breaking ball in the dirt and then two consecutive change-up after that. Billy Summers goes down on three pitches. So that's one way to take care of business. Strike out the guy up there. Don't have to worry about the runner on board. Bring up Connor Crane. Crane struck out swinging his first time up. Three strikeouts now for Jake Johnson in three and two-thirds innings. Good economy of pitches, just middle 40 pitches right now at 45. Another swing and a miss. Wags the breaking stuff really working, off-speed stuff going very well right now for Johnson. He's kind of found a rhythm up there and go with what works until they can find a way to hit it. Fouled out of play. Crane's been a nice little addition to this Cowboy lineup. He's a Juco All-American coming out of Lamar Community College out there in Colorado. and 274 hitter. Eight homers, 14 doubles. Good guy to have in the middle of the lineup. Swing and a miss on the 0-2, and Johnson, after giving up the one-out single, strikes out the next two to get out of trouble. Most of the time, you're only as good as your starting pitcher, and Johnson responding to that after giving up the one-out single. We head to the bottom of the fourth, two to nothing. Southeastern leads. You're listening. You're watching. But I thought we were supposed to have the big run. No, you're in the other room. You think they'll switch? You could ask. You guys wouldn't mind us taking the big room, would you? What happens when the 2015 Silverado HD goes head-to-head -head with the competition? In situations that matter most. In the real world. Where you can see for yourself. Witness a real-world test of HD truck capability and compare what really matters to truck buyers firsthand. That's amazing. Watch Silverado go head-to-head. -head. Visit Chevy.com slash HDTest to see more. Good morning, John. Ricky? Man, I've been sleepy lately. How come the decaf, then? This isn't decaf. Dude, are you colorblind? No. We welcome you back to the press box here at Constellation Field. The first team eliminated in the early morning game, Nichols State, the team that beat them, the two-seed Northwestern State, joined now by Lane Burroughs, the head coach of the Demons, here in the press box. As right now, it's two to nothing 
in favor of southeastern Louisiana as we head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. And a ground ball right back up the middle to start things off for Brett Hoffman. So southeastern, this is when they're most dangerous. Lane Burroughs, the head coach of the Demons, you probably in your mind should have taken two of three from the Lions down in Hammond. You ended up taking one of the three, one of the few teams that actually got a win off of Southeastern this year. Uh, before we talk about where you're at right now and, and the, the place that NSU's at, talk about Southeastern Louisiana with a leadoff man aboard and just how difficult, how much pressure they put on you in this situation. Well, they got a great offensive club. Uh, thing that uh, makes them so special is their weekend rotation. They got three guys that can uh, beat you at any time. Uh, they're tough to beat in a series. I've been saying all along, if they have a shot in a Super Regional, they'll be tough to beat. But to answer your question, they do a lot of the small things. Matt does a great job. Uh, hes I give him credit. He's not scared to take risk. Uh, it's kind of a high-risk, high-reward type offense. And uh, they can run. They can... Uh, throw down to first. Not quite in time, but a nice throw from Cameron Toole behind the dish to try to catch Brett Hoffman at first base. They got a good team speed. They can run, and uh, got some guys in the middle that can drive the baseball. So, kind of having one of those magical years that we all uh, hope for and wish for. So, uh, nothing but praise and good words for Matt and his staff in uh, Southeastern. Hoffman only two for two in stolen base attempts. So you wouldn't expect him to straight steal, but we did see Menard square initially. Menard, by the way, flew out to right his first time up. He is 0 for 1. Let's talk about what, uh, what went on with your squad, Coach. We'll uh, get to you that in just a moment. Make sure you're connected well here. As again, squaring to bunt, that time taking the strike is Kenan Menard. Count one ball and one strike. Let's talk about what your team did today, uh, fighting back off the elimination game. You play again at 9 a.m. tomorrow, but uh, bases loaded, nobody out in the top half of the first inning, just one run allowed, one run allowed in the second, and then Josh Aller, who does that all the time, it seems like, puts guys on and leaves them there. Again, it looks like small ball for the Lions. And again, a strike inside. That's two strikes. Might take that play off a little bit. But talk about the resilience of your team and, and what they did this morning to come, a, come away with a 4-3 win over Nichols. Well, Josh, in the first inning, he just minimized the inning. Uh, something he's done his whole career. He's going to scatter hits. He's going to scatter 10 to 12 hits, get runners on. And, but what he does so well is he minimizes innings. And uh, that's how we were able to win. The first inning was huge this morning. Well, Winard will square on 1-2. And... Take that pitch outside. Obviously, the foul out in play here. So, interesting to see Menard go ahead and continue to square, even with two strikes. So, you've used one bullpen guy. You've used Brandon Smith, your closer, for three and a third. Give me some indication of what you can do moving forward with the rest of your bullpen available and then your, your third starter set to go tomorrow at 9 a.m., Jeffrey Stovall. Bunt will be laid down the first base side. So, even with... Two strikes. They go ahead and lay down the su successful sacrifice bunt for Menard. Goes down 3-4 on the putout. Nice work by Kenan Menard, even with two strikes, to go ahead and make that sacrifice bunt happen. And now a runner in scoring position for Southeastern as Hoffman ends up down at second base. Right fielder Julian Service will... Julian Service will step in. He's 0 for 1, grounded out to second his first time up. Bryce Kingsley has to work out of a little bit of trouble here. Breaking ball in the dirt. So where do you set up going forward now, Lane? You, you, you've only used one bullpen arm, two starters. You've got Jeffrey Stovall going tomorrow, who certainly can eat up some innings if necessary. But how are you set up after having used your closer for three and a third today? Well, it's all hands on deck now. Uh, everybody's on call. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, we're going to be throwing some guys. We've got to win four games in two days. We talked about that. Our guys know what's in front of them. You know, we'll run Jeffrey out there tomorrow. He's, uh, his last four outings have been phenomenal. He's pitched well, the best he's pitched all year. He's going to fill up the strike zone. We know that. But... Uh, there's no tomorrow. As you saw Nichols today, Coach Thibodeau, they had to go to the pen early and often, and that's what you got to do when you're facing elimination. 1-1 one, one delivery to service. Another breaking ball. Beautiful right on the outside corner for the strike. Were you at all surprised by the, the top four seeds all falling on the first day of the Southland Tournament? No. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, 
You know, I think our league is so strong and so uh, close knit together, one to eight. It doesn't matter what seeds. We got a lot of great coaches, great players, and anybody can beat anybody on any given day. The one two got him swinging another one down low, and that a huge out for Bryce Kingsley. The swinging strikeout, leaving Hoffman at second for the time being. For Chris Eads, Eads grounded out to short his first time up. Certainly, Kingsley would love that. Two to nothing, Southeastern with the lead here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. We're talking to Lane Burroughs, the Northwestern State head coach. Demons surviving and advancing this morning. 9 a.m. games, you've got the potential to play three in a row now. Uh, just a mindset you have to overcome, like the weather that everyone's had to overcome this year? It is. We talk about toughness in our program and uh, dominating the elements. And getting up and playing a 9 a.m. game is an element. It doesn't have to be the weather, per se, uh, and it's something you... I told our guys, we'll see how tough we are. Uh, they knew what we were facing, and uh, we know what's ahead of us, so it's just a matter of overcoming it mentally. Kingsley's fastball misses outside. Two balls and no strikes now to Eads in the eighth spot. Ryan Byers, the left fielder, waits on deck. This is your first trip down here to Constellation Field. It the uh, first time that, that this was held here two years ago. Demons did not make it in your first year. You engineered one of the largest comebacks in Southland Conference history from one year to the next. As that one's lined into left field, the drop for a base hit. Gilbo up and throwing. No chance for Hoffman to make it home. So just a single for Chris Eads into left field. But runners at the corners with two away. Same thing that happened in the last inning. Two out, Southeastern scratched across a run with a couple of two-out singles, three in a row to be exact. So Ryan Byers, the left fielder, steps in. He grounded out to short his first time up, 0 for 1 on the day. Trying to keep the rally going here with two outs in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Now we're have a conversation. Justin Hill will already make the call to the bullpen. So that'll do it for Bryce Kingsley. Justin Hill has seen enough. We'll see a new arm for the McNeese Cowboys. Take a break, come back, give you the... New arm for McNeese State. Bryce Kingsley's morning and afternoon is done. Back with more of the Southland Tournament on ESPN. McNeese State and Southland Conference baseball fans, your vote yeah, is needed. Sure. Help sure support McNeese outfielder nice. Andrew Guillot by logging on to www.seniorclassaward.com and voting for the senior as the nation's top student athlete. Voting is open through June 8th, and you can vote up to three times per day. So act today and vote for McNeese's Andrew Guillot as this year's Senior Class Award recipient. I'm Andrew Guillot, and I approve this message. Second year manager Justin Hill makes the quick call to the bullpen. Cole Prejean, senior from Bruley, Louisiana. Two and three with a 270 ERA. 28th appearance of the year, 27th in relief. He does have a save. 53 and a third innings, 38 hits, 16 runs, 15 walks, 44 strikeouts. Opponents batting 209. Off the righty, Cole Prejean joining us in the press box. Lane Burroughs, the head coach of the Northwestern State Demons, the two seed who lost yesterday to Houston Baptist, the seven seed, four to one, survived against the three seed Nichols this morning, advancing four to three. And this is, I would imagine, for you know, you're in your third year, Justin Hill's in his second year, Matt Reiser's in his second year, a lot of great young coaches in this league, but I've got to figure that this is a tough scenario in the loser's bracket. How does it change your approach to replacing pitchers when you're looking at the idea that you may not have tomorrow to play, you can't mess around. Uh, you got to, you got to make a move to the pin uh, early and often if, if you have to. There's no tomorrow. We saw Nichols do that. Coach Thibodeau to this morning. Uh, he didn't waste any time getting Deems out of the game, and uh, that's that's all you can do. You got you got guys down there to help you win this game, extend it. You got to go to it. Ryan Byers steps in, the left fielder. 
We mentioned grounded out to short his first time up. Runners at the corners with two out. Southeastern's fans getting into it. Beautiful breaking ball from Prejean for strike one. I think the music is still playing here in the press box. That's why they went ahead and home plate umpire turned around and made the motion. Aaron Freeman working behind the plate. Ken Langford at first. Thomas Wachowiak at second. And Chris Simons at third base. One of the luxuries of tournament play. You get a full staff of four umpires. That one misses low and outside. So the rest of the way, Coach, what uh, – continue the same philosophy or can you afford to pace yourself knowing that there is the potential as you mentioned for four more games in two days can you pace yourself with your bullpen or is it just you've got to go with who you can get out there and, and knows you can get outs with you got to go with what you got to go with you can't pace yourself uh no tomorrow every inning every pitch is important and I, I know that's cliche. I know all the coaches say that. But uh, when you're in a loser's bracket, and elimination, and there's no tomorrow, you got to win the tournament to get to a regional. We know that. Um, so there's no tomorrow, and you got to. One, two, swing and a miss. Beautiful pitch by Prejean. Gets McNeese out of the inning. Lane Burroughs, congratulations on surviving, and uh, we will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you very much. That was Demon Head Coach Lane Burroughs from the two-seat North Western State. McNeese gets out of trouble. Cole Prejean comes in and gets the strikeout to strand two. Head of the top of the fifth, two to nothing. Southeastern Louisiana leads. You're watching Southland Conference Tournament action on ES. There is no royal blood in this country. Nothing is reserved for anyone. It's all just out there, waiting for someone to reach out and take it. And the ones who do. These are the kings and queens of America. Sunday Night Baseball, Rangers, Yankees, tonight at 8. Baseball rules on ESPN. No, bad dog. Outside. We've been through this. Disgusting. Now you like it when the little guys are coming out and enjoying some baseball on a beautiful, well, it is finally afternoon. Mike Wagus, Wagenheim and Patrick Netherton, we've been up since, well, I was up at 6.45. Not sure what time you got up, Wags, but it was uh, it was early for the 9 a.m. game between Nichols and Northwestern State. Six, seven, eight in the order due up here for McNeese. By the way, close the book on the starter, Bryce Kingsley from the Cowboys. Three and two-thirds innings, seven hits, two earned runs. No walks and two strikeouts for him as the first pitch is in for a strike to James Cantu. Cantu singled back up the middle his first time up. Swings at a pitch well outside of the zone. Jake Johnson, just over 50 pitches now, continues to cruise. Got strikeouts of the last two batters he faced in the fourth inning. Four Ks now in four-plus innings. Another one that just lifted into left center field. That'll drop. Probably will be extra bases. Cantu very fast around first. Digs and slides into second. Lead off double for James Cantu. So McNeese has something going here in the top half of the fifth inning. Cantu knew right off the bat he was trying for two. No doubt in his mind. And that's impressive considering the fact that ball was not hit particularly deep. But then again, the outfielders against Cantu were playing very shallow, so they didn't really have an angle to come and cut that off. And that meant Cantu cruises into second, which will bring up Lewis Gilbo, the left fielder for the Cowboys. He grounded out to third his first time up, 0 for 1, as McNeese tries to rally here in the fifth inning. Got three Cowboys now with 14 doubles on the year. Very impressive. First pitch misses outside, though if you've ever been to Lake Charles and seen their field, it shouldn't surprise you. It is a little bit of a bandbox there in Lake Charles. A lot of balls, I would imagine, hit off the wall there. They have a double-decker wall as well. That one hit right at the two-hopper to the shortstop, and Menard boots it. Unfortunately, Cantu cannot move up for the Cowboys. 
It will, however, put Lewis Gilbo aboard. It looked like Menard took his eye off the ball and trying to make sure Cantu got back to second or maybe was trying to set him up for Ruled. a possible put out. Yeah, he lifted his head up yep. ever so slightly. Ruled as an error. Cantu does not advance and Gilbo stays at first, but first and second with your eight hole hitter up. This brings up an interesting situation, Mike. You, do you lay down? It's, this calls for an automatic sacrifice here with first and second and nobody out, but your nine hole hitter is the guy that's up next, Cameron Tool. He does square. That's his Matt Gallier. Takes that pitch outside for ball one. I mean, that's the prescription. I mean, ultimately, you want to lay down the sacrifice here. As third, third base coach Roberto Vaz goes through the signs. Apparently has confidence in his catcher, Tool. He's only hitting a buck 91 this year, but. Well, and that's the issue. You, know, you, you sacrifice with the eight-hole hitter, who's batting 288 with six homers and 20 runs driven in. You have him lay down the sack, but then you bring up a guy, as you mentioned, Tool is only hitting 191 coming into this game. So a lot of things percolating right now. He lays the sacrifice down. The catcher will come up and go to third. Eads gets the lead runner. Great play by Chris Eads behind the dish. Comes up and throws a strike to get James Cantu at third base. Erases the lead runner. Remains first and second, but now with one out. Gallier reaches on the fielder's choice. What a great play coming up. In that situation, your pitcher's kind of playing traffic cop, but I'm not sure if Johnson really got a good look at the field as he was charging in there. I don't know that anybody, I'm not sure who told him third. I think that was just a field play by Eads. Cameron Toole, the nine-hole hitter. The catcher is up. He grounded out to the pitcher his first time up. Time was called right before Johnson made that throw. We mentioned earlier Cameron Toole, the Cowboy catcher, was on the Johnny Bench Award watch list. Well, so is uh, Chris Eads. Yeah, rightfully so with that kind of strike on the bunt attempt. Breaking ball misses outside. 1-0, McNeese with its best opportunity. Matter of fact, it's the first time they've had a runner in scoring position in this game against Jake Johnson. Had the leadoff single in the first, then the offensive interference. Had a two-out single in the second. He was left there. A one-out single in the fourth, then a back-to-back -back strikeout. Look out. Now throw a little bit high coming back to the pitcher, Johnson. Well, you're not going to get on any award watch list making that kind of throw back to the pitcher. But the count, two balls and no strikes. So Tool, if he finds a way aboard, even with a walk, you flip it back to the top of the order with Giot and Provenzano, you'll feel pretty good about yourself. And Tool, got to imagine he's taking on 3-0 and might even take on 3-1. Force Johnson to throw him one. All three Cowboys that have been up in this inning so far here in the top of the fifth have reached. Taking all the way in for a strike. McNeese trying to get something going here to rally in the top of the fifth inning. Gave up a single run in the first and a single run in the third to southeastern Louisiana. The Lions are the home team by virtue of a coin flip because both teams were the home team yesterday. Taking on 3-1 as well, and Johnson throws him a pair of strikes. I haven't walked anybody yet. Has Cade four so far. Not surprised, really, that he elected to go ahead and take on 3-0 and 3-1. Figured he might have had Johnson rattled a little bit. Let's see what 3-2 looks like. Nice battle there from Tool. Working the pitch count a little bit. Johnson going over 60 pitches now. So the pitch count still fairly manageable. Cowboys face Johnson back in mid-April. Lasted six innings, three earned runs, six strikeouts. Kind of a ho-hum performance. Second 3-2 pitch, and another one fouled off. 
So a good battle here between the catcher Cameron Toole in the nine spot and Jake Johnson. Crowds continuing to filter in here at Constellation Field. Cowboys trying to stave off elimination. Loser of this game goes home. Another payoff pitch, and he walked. Cameron Toole draws the walk. Three straight balls, two straight strikes, two fouled off, and then the fourth ball, and now back to the top of the order for Andrew Giot with the bases loaded and one out, and Matt Reiser is going to make his way out from the southeastern dugout, and he's also going to send some guys chugging down to the bullpen. Looks like uh, Cade Granier is heading out there to get ready to loosen up in a long conversation with Riser here. Matt Riser, the head coach of the year in the Southland Conference, done a remarkable job uh, living up, I guess, to the lofty standards J.R. Teagues had set in his tenure with the program. It's not easy for a coach, especially someone outside of the program, uh, to come in. The riser has done a heck of a job just just keeping things the way that they were well, and, it's and it's not enough forward. it's not enough that that you're following in the footsteps of jr teagues he's also your boss right when when our teagues moved up from the baseball coach to the athletic director spot uh it's a little bit like a little down the road a little west of hammond what happened in baton rouge when smoke laval and then paul maneri were hired at lsu and their athletic director was skip bertman now, obviously, Skip Bertman, one of the great legends of all time in college baseball. But uh, you, it's a little bit tougher, I'd imagine, when the former guy, the former boss, the one who really built the program, is the one that's calling the shots and looking over your shoulder. So Giot steps in, bases loaded, one out. All four Cowboys have reached base. The one was out. This one a grounder right at the third baseman. Hoffman goes home for one, eats to first, not in time. Giot beats it out. So Southeastern cannot turn the double play, but again, they get the lead runner. Eads on the sacrifice bunt attempt came up and got the lead runner at third. This time, Brett Hoffman, the third baseman, comes in and gets the force out at home. So that brings up Provenzano, freshman of the year in the conference, who's 0 for 2 today. Bases remain loaded, now two outs. Conversation here down the third baseline between uh, Roberto Vaz and Provenzano. You mentioned, you know, Matt Reiser answering to his boss. Well, it was his boss for, for a number of years anyway while Reiser was a hitting coach. And I think J.R. Teague was smart enough to realize, listen, I know what I'm getting here. This guy has the experience. He's got the mentality to be the head coach. You need to be a little bit hands-off. Worry about the rest of the department. Just kind of let Reiser take the reins and run with it, and he's done it. This one Paid up. off. Ground ball to the right side, easily handled by Kreitz. And... Southeastern gets out of the inning. Bases loaded, two men on with no outs. Bases loaded with one out. Bases loaded with two outs. And McNeese cannot score a run. Head to the bottom half of the fifth, two to nothing. Southeastern Louisiana remains in the lead. This is Southland Conference Tournament Baseball on ESPN. McNeese State and Southland Conference baseball fans, your vote is needed. Help support McNeese outfielder Andrew Guillot by logging on to www.seniorclassaward.com and voting for the senior as the nation's top student athlete. Voting is open through June 8th, and you can vote up to three times per day. So act today and vote for McNeese's Andrew Guillot as this year's Senior Class Award recipient. I'm Andrew Guillot, and I approve this message. in Constellation Field. We saw the sun briefly. Might want to tell her she can put her umbrella away for a little while. I don't believe it's raining or sunshine. Just overcast. It's been that way most of the morning here in southwest Houston, Sugarland, Texas, suburb of 
the Houston metro area. It's a very fashionable umbrella, though. Well, I, look, I, I would carry one like that if I had the opportunity to. <laughs> Top of the order for southeastern Louisiana, center fielder Jacob Seward. His first pitch strike from Cole Prejean. Seward. 0 for 2 at the top of the order. He's grounded out to second, grounded out to the pitcher, player of the year in the Southland Conference. Beautiful breaking ball from Prejean, and he's quickly ahead in the count, 0 and 2. Yeah, Patrick, we saw all those lost opportunities for Nichols earlier on in the day against Northwestern State, and McNeese down 2 nothing. opportunities in the fifth inning, a leadoff double, and an error put him in a good situation and could not capitalize, and the Lions don't let you get into games very often when they give you a shot you got to take it that ball lined into left center field so an opening single for jacob seward on an 0-2 pitch by the way very costly mistake for most pitchers you don't want to leave 0-2 up where someone can get some aluminum on it and that brings up carson kreitz kreitz has been the story today two for two with a double and a triple plus he scored both runs for southeastern Louisiana, Kreitz out of the West Texas area, Amarillo. Getting on up towards the panhandle there in Amarillo. Again, just a sophomore, just like the man right in front of him, Seward. Finds a strike on the inside corner. Prejean coming in in relief. So far throwing strikes, just one ball and eight pitches. Southeastern starting to get some activity going in their bullpen as well. Really changes the complexion. We heard Lane Burroughs, the Northwestern State coach, mention it. Changes how you approach things when you're in the loser's bracket. Much more willing to go into the bullpen early, into the bullpen often, stretch some of your bullpen guys. The closer for Northwestern State goes three and a third to get the save. Just changes the entire complexion of your team when you're faced with having to win five games in four days. And now four games, five days of games in three days, and then now four games in two days. Prejean was in this situation last year against Corpus Christi in an elimination game. That was up in Conway. He went four innings and really pitched the ball well. A couple of hits, shut him out, three strikeouts, and helped McNeese to survive in advance. And that's all it's about at this point. Now you can't, can't leave your guys over in the bullpen. If your closer's sitting in the bullpen not pitching, he's not doing you any good. And another clean single through the left side. So Southeastern has something going here against Prejean. Back to back singles. That makes Carson Kreitz now three for three on the day. So now an interesting situation for Matt Reiser. As you have first and second with nobody out, you have the heart of your order. Daniel Midyet, the designated hitter, and Kevin Carr, your first baseman up. You know, obviously the percentage play, Mike, is you lay down the sack bunt here and then let your, your uh, cleanup hitter go in there and do the job for you. But Midyet's a great hitter in his own right, coming in hitting 309, eight homers and 45 runs driven in. What do you do? I don't know if I lay down that bunt here. I mean, you could play for the big inning right now. Maybe put this one away. That one swung on and missed. They throw down behind at second. Got him at second base. What a throw from Cameron Toole. Connor Lloyd sneaking in behind Jacob Seward at second base and a bad base running mistake by Seward as Lloyd gets the glove down. Now that changes things completely. Instead of first and second with nobody out, it's first with one out. And Matt Reiser is going to call over mid yet. Well, you don't often see southeastern Louisiana, an incredibly aggressive team on the base paths. You don't see them often make mistakes like that. But that is a huge mistake from the player of the year in the conference. Just strain too far and was confident in mid yet's ability to get the bunt down and took that extra step, step and a half. But it took a great throw to get him. That's exactly what Cameron Toole made. And Toole put it right on the front edge of the bag, the third base edge of the second base bag. All Lloyd really had to do was put the glove down. And that a massive play if McNeese is going to stay in this game at this point. The 
Lions wearing those camo jersey tops with the white pants. I love the McNeese, those blue unis that McNeese have on. Just have a very classic look to them. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Winner of this game advances to play tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. against Northwestern State in another elimination game. Winner of that game plays at 4 p.m. And if the, guy, the team out of the loser's bracket wins that one, they play again Saturday at 9 a.m. So potentially three consecutive 9 a.m. games for one of these two teams and or Northwestern State. The one-two misses low. Not a shocker, though, Wags, that, that the top four seeds would fall in the Southland Tournament. This is three of the top four fell on the first day in the tournament last year. This tournament, this, this conference is just so balanced top to bottom. It was only, what, five years ago, it's 2010, where all four of the top seeds lost on the first day. So this is not, it's not an every year occurrence, but it's not rare either. It's just the balance and the parity in this league, and it just goes to show you everybody has a very, very solid frontline starter. The difference in the Southland Conference between the great teams and the teams in the middle of the pack and the bottom teams, it doesn't come on the first day of the weekend. It comes on the second and especially the third day. But anything can happen in the opening game between two teams. Yeah, most of these teams have good Friday and Saturday guys. Typically, Friday and Saturday is covered. It's, when, it's Sunday that becomes an adventure for most of these teams. And if you've got three quality starters that you can run out there, you're really in good shape. You add to that a midweek guy, and you're really set up. This one a little flare right at the shortstop. Lloyd tries to get the double play back at first, but Kreitz is back in time. That time Lloyd didn't need to be 5'8". Five, 5'7 five, set him, did him just fine. So mid yet, a little flare out. That'll bring up first baseman Kevin Carr. Carr is two for twos, driven in a run, has a double back in the first, and the RBI single in the third. You look at a team like Northwestern State, who has survived today and they'll play again tomorrow. You got Jeffrey Stovall going, who's been an anchor in the rotation all year, but who so knows? many games were rained out for the yes. Demons this year that there just aren't a whole lot of guys with midweek experience. No, and that's the thing. They have a, a designated midweek starter in Evan Tidwell, but he's he's thrown so infrequently. They did not have a lot of midweek games down the stretch, and a lot of teams start tapering off their midweek games as the stretch run of the conference season uh, comes about. But then you have so many of these games rained out it's not getting any regular work. Ball swung on. Count one and one now. Bottom of the fifth inning. He's Mike Wagenheim from Nickel State. I'm Patrick Netherton from Northwestern State. We appreciate Chris Mykoski and the Southland Conference for giving us an opportunity to come in here and either bore or entertain you, depending on, I think, I think the only one that's really entertained is my mother, if, and I, she has no chance of being able to watch this. Throw over to first to check on Kreitz. Kreitz on the season 11 of 14 in stolen base attempts. No watch ESPN app for Mama Netherton? Uh, she, she, if she had the watch ESPN app, there is no chance she would understand how to actually use it. I have to explain to her how to text message about, about every other week. Another throw across. Just wanted to keep Kreitz close by. I don't want to let the... Lions steal a base and get a guy into scoring position. One of their two runs came with two outs. That back in the third inning. They scored a single run in the first and one in the third. Back to overcast here at Constellation Field and another third straight throw across to first base from Cole Prejean, the reliever. McNeese already in their bullpen. Bryce Kingsley just lasting into the fourth inning. Ball hit through the left side. Another base hit. Southeastern Louisiana now ten hits in the ball game. Only two runs to show for it, but Mike, you continue to put the ball in play as often as they do. Ten hits 
know, that becomes 12, 14, 15 hits. You're just not going to be able to keep them off the scoreboard much much longer, I don't think. No, they wouldn't have been kept off the scoreboard there had it not been for the pickoff of uh, Seward earlier in the inning. So Brett Hoffman steps in. Hoffman, the third baseman, batting in the five spot in the order. So we'll have a consultation coming out to the mound. Hoffman is one for two, struck out swinging to end the first and led off the fourth with a single as uh, Corey Barton makes his way out to chat things over with his hurler Cole Prejean. Tournament is set up the rest of the day now in the winner's side on this side of the bracket, the side that McNeese and southeastern Louisiana are on. You'll see Sam Houston as they took down McNeese in game one, five to one. That was the late game last night. Southeastern Louisiana falling to A&M Corpus Christi. So the Islanders will take on the Bearcats later this afternoon. All the games will be covered on ESPN3. Runners at first and second now. Another beautiful breaking ball in for strike one to Hoffman. Hoffman. Seems like he's been in the Lion lineup for years and years and years. And he has, really. Yeah, he's one of those guys. Second all-time in games played there. That one gets low. Dirt ball and heads up base running from Kreitz as he'll take third on the wild pitch. Puts himself just a little bit closer to scoring here. Carr stays put at first base. Kreitz always seems to have a smile on his face. Well, you would too if you were three for three. It's already scored a pair of runs and now standing at third base. A&M Corpus and Sam Houston will play tonight at seven. The next game in the rotation for the Southland Tournament, Central Arkansas and Houston Baptist, the home team really. That one fouled off. Houston Baptist, 4-1 winner over Northwestern State. Houston Baptist, the seven seed. Advancing to play in the next game against Central Arkansas. UCA defeating Nichols 7-6. The Colonels with a four-run bottom of the ninth and had the tying run at third base for a ground out to first. Ended that one, the comeback attempt by the Colonels. Check swing. They're going to say he went. And there you go. Tool will finish that one off. So Cole Prejean gets out of danger, giving up three hits in the inning but no runs come across we head to the sixth two to nothing southeastern louisiana over mcneese state you're watching the southland conference baseball tournament on espn at mid-south bank we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams that's one promise you can bank on we're not just business associates we're neighbors we're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With locations in Texas and Louisiana and still growing, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. The Southland Conference is 4,200 student athletes from 13 member institutions competing in 17 NCAA Division I sports we are Southland Strong exactly what we look like in the booth right now feet up just hanging out Patrick Netherton, Mike Wagenheim, just uh, hanging out with you here on ESPN. Good day at the ballpark. Overcast, not a whole lot of threat for sunburn here today. Luckily, the rain has stayed away. Good contingent of southeastern Louisiana fans and McNeese fans have made their way out here to Constellation Field. Connor Lloyd will lead things off. 3-4-5 in the order due up here for McNeese State. Another one high, 2-0. Oh. I misspoke earlier. I want to correct myself, and actually thanks to Chris Mykoski for catching it. This is the opposite side of the bracket from the game that happens tomorrow at 9 a.m. The uh, loser of, of the 7 o'clock game today, A&M Corpus Christi and Sam Houston, will play the winner of this game tomorrow at noon. 
And obviously the loser of that game will go home. 3-0 now. Taking all the way is Lloyd for a strike. There's your bracket. All lower seeds advancing. Central Arkansas. The sixth seed, Houston Baptist, the seventh seed. Both advancing as Lloyd thought he had that taken care of. Thought it was uh, ball four. He was headed to first. On the opposite side, A&M Corpus Christi. The eighth seed, and Sam Houston, the five seed. And all the way back from 3-0, Lloyd strikes out. Big pitches from Jake Johnson. Five strikeouts for the right-hander now, and Lloyd heads back. One away for Billy Summers, the designated hitter. Johnson continues to operate effectively. Obviously, the longer a starter can eat up innings, the better things will go for Southeastern Louisiana, we mentioned the prospect of five games in three days, including two on Friday and two on Saturday that could both be necessary. Coming up today in the next game, in the winner's bracket on the 2, 3, 6, and 7 side. The two seed Northwestern State in that bracket. Central Arkansas and Houston Baptist do up next. Chris Mikoski, I believe, will be back in for you on that one. Doing yeoman's work all the way through the tournament. The 2-2, two -two, that one a flare, but... Handled easily by the Southeastern shortstop, Kenan Menard. So two up and two down. Johnson continues to cruise. Hey, he just has McNeese guessing. Yeah, they're, they're completely flummoxed by him right now. That brings up Connor Crane, the first baseman. Crane is 0 for 2. He struck out twice. And all of the strikeouts have been swinging in this game. So McNeese trying to be aggressive, but ultimately coming up empty on their swings. Right there in the middle of the order, too. The four and five hitters between Billy Summers and Connor Crane. Three strikeouts between them. They've gone 0 for 5. See what Crane can do here, and he'll promptly hit one into center field. Chasing the center fielder, Jacob Seward back, but he'll come away with that one. A three up and three down. Sixth inning work by Jake Johnson. Head to the bottom half of the frame. Still two to nothing. Southeastern Louisiana leads over McNeese State. You're watching Southland Tournament Baseball on ESPN. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah! I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We are never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. For all the nevers in life, State Farm is there. <laughs> Two to nothing, southeastern Louisiana leading McNeese State. The Lions, the regular season champion of the Southland Conference. The one seed coming in fell yesterday to Texas A&M Corpus Christi, the eight-seeded Islanders. Behind Trevor Belichick getting the four to two win. Advancing them to the winner's bracket. Meanwhile, southeastern Louisiana and McNeese both playing for their lives here. 
First pitch strike to Kenan Menard, the shortstop for the Lions. Ground that one just foul of third base. Menard is 0 for 1. He has flown out to right, lay down a sack bunt in the fourth inning, something that southeastern Louisiana does a lot and very well. They also steal a lot of bags, although we haven't seen any yet so far. Saw one major base running error by the Lions in the last inning. Jacob Seward getting picked off of second base. Cole Prejean remains in for his second complete inning of relief work. You wonder what could have been in that fifth inning for Southeastern. Runner picked off a second in that leaping grab by Connor Lloyd at short robbing Daniel Mid yet. A big inning turned into nothing. A couple of wasted pitches on 0-2 and 1-2. More activity in the bullpen for the Cowboys, who, by the way, matching the southeastern Louisiana camouflage jerseys. They're wearing camouflage hats. Easy ball for Provenzano at second base. He'll take care of that one for the first out of the inning. Brings up right fielder Julian Service. Service is 0 for 2. Stalking out in the bullpen is the closer for McNeese. Colin Kober has one of the more interesting releases you'll see. Not only a side armor, but almost a, more of a submarine release, that almost underhand throwing style. Service is 0 for 2. As I mentioned, struck out once, and he'll line that one right at Provenzano. So Provenzano, the busy man so far, but quick work here. Two up and two down for Chris Eads, the lion catcher. Eads making a fantastic defensive play on a sacrifice bun attempt, cutting down the lead runner with first and second and nobody out. Cowboys ultimately got the bases loaded with one out and with two outs and couldn't play to run. That, I think, potentially may be the turning point in this game. Eads fouls that one off. Cobra, meanwhile, just throws at such an extreme angle. It's, it's insane. From the third base side, as a right-handed hitter, you have a ball that looks like it's coming and hitting you, and all of a sudden it's back out over the plate. 0-2, oh, got him going. They'll appeal down, and first base umpire Aaron Freeman says he went. So three up and three down go the Lions in the six. When we come back, we'll turn it back over to the professional in the broadcast booth, Mike Wagenheim. He'll take you through the final three innings as Southeastern Louisiana continues to lead McNeese State 2 to nothing. You're watching Southland Conference Tournament Baseball Action on ESPN. When you're looking for the perfect award or branding solution, look no further than Levy Marketing and Awards. A true innovator in the art of recognition, Levy Marketing and Awards is a U.S. custom awards manufacturer with over 50 years of experience providing guaranteed personal service and high-quality production catering to athletics and collegiate sports. Log on to LevyMarketingAwards.com or call toll-free 855-879-5389 to create your lasting impression today. Levy Marketing and Awards, providing streamlined solutions to meet all of our clients' business needs. Cheer for the stumbles. The he should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. Seventh inning coming around here from Sugarland, Texas, southeastern Louisiana, the regular season champs of the Southland Conference. On top of McNeese, 2 0. Lion right hander Jake Johnson with a four hit shutout going. And now well, Cowboy fans trying to will their club back into this thing. Johnson returning to work here. Six, seven, eight batters due up. Cowboys and Lions trying to hang around another day. James Cantu at the plate. Johnson just missing. Johnson with a shaky fifth. Got out of the inning unscathed as the Lions, or rather the uh, Cowboys, left him loaded. Johnson recovered with a 1 2 3 6. Now, if anyone's going to start the rally, it might be James Cantu. Two for two on the day, singled back in the second, doubled in the fifth as well. 
he might be the guy. Actually doubled on an 0-2 pitch. Johnson chucks one in the dirt. But in the end, Mike, if, if this game goes the way that it's currently trending and Southeastern ends up winning, it's just going to be a matter of missed opportunities. McNeese had a couple of opportunities to, to maybe get a single run across or even in that fifth inning get several runs across. Couldn't do it. Lions, meanwhile, took advantage of their opportunities. Oh, pop up to third. Brent Hoffman into foul ground. One gone. And it just seems like, and you mentioned it, it seems like McNeese is guessing a lot against Jake Johnson, and he has gotten stronger as this game has progressed. He's just now getting into the mid-80s in pitches. Certainly primed to go a complete game if Southeastern needs him to. Mixing up not only the location, but the actual pitch selection as well. Just doing a wonderful job of keeping him off balance as Lewis Gilbo stands in and smokes one to right center. Out of the reach of Carson Kreitz. A one out single for Gilbo is now one for three on the day. Cowboy left fielder getting aboard, trying to get something going. And again, that's that's fine and dandy. It's your fifth hit of the ball game, but what do you do? Do you get the clutch hit you need? And McNeese was incapable of doing that in the fifth inning. Brings up the Lake Charles native, Matt Gallier. Strike out in a fielder's choice as he tried to lay down a bunt back in the fifth. Lions got the lead runner out at third. There is some action down in the southeastern pen. Looks like they got a couple of right-handers getting loose. Just missed high. 2-0 the count. That is Mason Klotz down there, along with uh, Matt Skurler. Gallier fouls one back. Two one count here to Gallier. Big pitch. And every time Johnson's needed a big pitch, he's delivered. He has risen to the occasion every single time. Yard Lane Burroughs mentioned Northwestern State's coach. Three really solid starters for Southeastern. Well, that one squeaks on through. So, two on and one out here. Same, same scenario you had in the fifth. Two on with one out. Then it was bases loaded with one out. Then bases loaded with two outs. No runs came across. McNeese has to get the timely hit. Gallier with his first knock of the day, and it brings up Cameron Toole out of the ninth spot. And it's all the bottom of the order. Uh, the entirety of that bases loaded rally in the fifth was in the bottom four of the order. Inside turn. Tool today with a comebacker. 1-3 put out back in the third, and then he walked in the fifth. That was the walk that loaded the bases initially. Remember, even in that rally outside of Cantu's double, there wasn't much going on offensively for mm -hmm. McNeese. You had the error, fielder's choice, put out the lead runner. A walk and another fielder's choice again put out a lead runner and a ground ball retired the side. Now, Southeastern helped a lot. Tool, if you'll remember, coming up went 3 0, then 3 2, then fouled a couple of pitches off before ultimately reaching on ball four. So Tool had a great battle to ultimately get himself aboard. But that's when Southeastern started erasing the lead runner a couple of times in a row. Left center field racing over his sewer. Won't get there. They're going to send home Gilbo. The throw going into third. And he gets by the third baseman Hoffman. Ricochet going to have a play at the plate. He is out by 10 feet. Wow. What a fortuitous bounce. Johnson going to back up the play, and it ricocheted right to him. And the, how about him 
Johnson diving with the backhand throw at the same time. Now the deficit is cut in half on the RBI hit by Tool. The overthrow to third. Gallier cut down at the plate. And the real play, which you, you didn't see, it was just off screen, was Johnson, who, as that ball ricocheted, he's racing out after it back into the field of play, grabs it, backhand flips it as he's falling on his face and makes a perfect strike to Eads. What a play by Johnson. And then, uh, understandably so, he gets up and, and immediately starts screaming and fist pumping after he made that big play. But the lead is cut in half. McNeese yeah. finally gets on the board. And Tool moved up to second on that throw. See how they wind up scoring that one. Andrew Giot with a chance to tie this thing up with a base hit. He's one for three today, singling back in the first. and was called for interference on a slide into second. Here comes Matt Reiser, a head coach for Southeastern Louisiana. And by the way, I believe that goes down 8-1-2 uh, on the putout at home plate. That is correct. And it doesn't look like an error will be charged on the advancement to second base by Tool. So conversation here between Riser and company. Two Lions ready in the pen. And I believe this is going to be the end of the line for Jake Johnson. No. So we will have a new pitcher coming in here for southeastern Louisiana. This will be right-hander Mason Klotz, who has only worked seven and a third innings all year. So an interesting choice here for Riser as Klotz makes his way in. Two to one ball game. Southeastern Louisiana with the advantage, but the Cowboys preparing to strike back. Fine job by Johnson. He gives up three consecutive hits here with one out in the seventh. There are two gone now after that outstanding defensive play by Johnson on the misfire to third that he backed up. So here is Mason Klotz. Louisiana native in his junior season, 6-2 a buck 83. Again, only seven appearances all year, seven and a third innings of work. Ten hits allowed, two of those for extra bases. He's given up ten runs, eight earned, seven walks, and 11 strikeouts, and 9.82 ERA, and a 323 batting average against. Again, you mentioned an interesting choice here. Klotz, I mean, you look at, you know, we're, we're provided stat sheets, and, and you can look at the relievers, and typically the starters are at the top. There's a little gap, then there's the relievers. And when you start to see relievers in a two-to-one ball game, you start thinking, okay, we must be looking at someone on the top end of that reliever's chart. But this is all the way down, second-to-worst ERA on the entire team. And that's what Mason Klotz has. He does have a save on the year, however. That save came very early in the conference season at Incarnate Word. In fact, that was the first conference game he appeared in. But he's only pitched in three conference games since then. You wonder if maybe there was an injury of some kind that kept him sidelined for a bit. By the way, obviously can't close the book yet on Jake Johnson, but six and two-thirds a quality work of quality work by him. Just under 100 pitches. Well, Andrew Guillaume with a runner at second steps in, takes a strike down the middle, and maybe there's something in the scouting report that Matt Reiser sees here in this matchup between Klotz and Guillaume. Klotz pitched well. On the final weekend of the regular season against New Orleans out of the pen on this one, getting away from Chad Eads. So now the potential tying run is 90 feet away. And that's the issue you run into, especially with a guy who hasn't thrown a ton, is what happens if he struggles locating the strike zone and throws wild pitches with a runner in scoring position. Down and away. Two balls and a strike. And that's six wild pitches for Klotz this year in seven and a third innings. Tying run 90 feet away. Down and outside again. Three balls and a strike.
Infield can play back with two gone. Little flare, and this will head out of play. And that's when you wonder about Klotz also, only having thrown seven and a third, having not pitched much during Southland play. Now, this is a tight situation. This is a team playing for its life. You have to wonder the pressure that's on a kid like Klotz who hasn't been there this year. And that one gets behind Eads, and the tying run will score. The walk to Giot, and the breaking ball got away. And that's just what we were talking about, Mike. You have a guy that comes in. He's throwing breaking balls. He's got sort of a sidearm delivery, sort of three-quarter slot. If he comes in not locating the strike zone, you've got a guy standing at second base. You can very easily wild pitch a run in, and he threw two of them in the at-bat to bring him home. Takes McNeese starter Bryce Kingsley off the hook. And no decision now for Jake Johnson as Joe Provenzano bats. South and freshman of the year takes a strike. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Everything's been hit to second base. And again, that just changes the entire complexion. And I sometimes wonder about head coaches, and obviously these guys have, have coached and played a lot more baseball than I have, but sometimes I wonder when you come get a guy who maybe struggles a little bit but has had success for the most part. Runner goes. Strong throw. Quick tag. Got him. That retires his side as Giot is thrown out at second, but McNeese puts up a two-spot. Here in the top of the seventh, we got ourselves a tie ball game. Good throw from Eads. Nice tag from Menard. Stretch time. Brand new ball game here from Sugar Land. This is a Southland Conference tournament on ESPN. Here with you from Constellation Field in Sugarland, Texas. Stretch time. 2 2 ball game now between Southeastern Louisiana and McNeese State. This is an elimination game. Let's take a look at how we got to this point here from Constellation Field. Highlights from this elimination contest is Southeastern Louisiana struck first. An RBI ground out from Daniel Midyet in the bottom of the first, chasing in Carson Kreitz, who delivered a one out triple. Then in the third inning, Base hit by Kevin Carr going the other way as Kreitz scores once again. 2-0 Southeastern Louisiana after three innings of play. But McNeese, after failing to strike very often against Jake Johnson, delivering two runs in the top half of the seventh inning. Cameron Toole with an RBI single. They get another run on a wild pitch. A 2-2 affair here into the bottom half of the seventh. Ryan Byers leading off against reliever Cole Prejean. Byers falls behind 0-2. Prejean took over for Bryce Kingsley with a couple of outs in the fourth. He's been fairly solid so far. Byers, meanwhile, 0 for 2 with a ground out and strikeout as Prejean interrupts his windup. We have to credit Prejean as well. I mean, Justin Hill came out and got Kingsley the starter very early, but Prejean has limited the damage. Done a very impressive job of that since coming in. Has not given up a run yet. Got a 1 2 3 6. Finished it up with a strikeout. Pop up behind the plate, headed in the seats. And there again, if you can get, you know, these teams are facing the prospect. It's such a daunting task. Now, granted, it can be done. Central Arkansas did it a couple of years ago here at Constellation Field where you lose your first game and then work your way out of the loser's bracket. But it requires so many arms to be able to do that. Anytime you can get a guy that comes in and throws effectively and eats up innings, it's a huge bonus. That's what Cole Prejean is doing right now as he gets Byers swinging for the second time. 
Uh, Jacob Seward coming up to bat, top of the order here for Southeastern. The Cowboys have a, a right-hander down in the pen again. That might be Cobra loosening once more, their closer. You can tell by the flowing mane coming out from the back of his hat. Seward one for three. Singled in the fifth, but was picked off second base. It's turned out to be a pretty big play here today. Straight too far from the bag on a butt. That's Cade Grenier in the southeastern pen. As Prejean just missed, 3-0 to Seward. Yeah, Kreitz on deck, and he has three hits today. Seward taking all the way, 3-1. There's Kober down there. Long locks and all. Yeah, Prejean coming back here, running the count full. Hope everyone gets a chance to see Kober's release point. Never seen anyone step as hard to the third base bag to throw to the plate as Colin Kober does. Prejean battled back, but it's ball four. And actually, I believe officially it hit him. And his home plate umpire throws up his hands. It's Thomas Wachowiak. Or is it? No, nope. Aaron Freeman yeah, called balls and second. strikes. So Seward officially hit with the pits. He's on board with one out. Carson Kreitz coming up to bat here. Kreitz already three hits, including a triple. He scored twice. And here comes Justin Hill, the head coach from McNeese State. Prejean, admirable job out of the pen in relief of Bryce Kingsley, and it will be Cobra, the stopper, one of the best in the nation, making his way in here for the Cowboys. We'll take a quick timeout, folks. Southeastern looking to regather the lead. 2-2 tie, bottom seven here from Sugarland in this elimination game. This is the Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates, we're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With locations in Texas and Louisiana and still growing, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. Southland Conference is 4,200 student athletes from 13 member institutions competing in 17 NCAA Division I sports. We are Southland Strong. Right-hander Colin Colbert, an early candidate on the watch list for Stopper of the Year in Division I Baseball. The sophomore from Lake Charles will inherit a runner at first with one out here in the home half of the seventh inning, an elimination game between McNeese State and Southeastern Louisiana. And this kid is fun to watch, definitely a unique delivery, especially difficult on right-handed hitters. And he will face... One of the hotter hitters in the league, Carson Kreitz, who already has three knocks on the day. Impressive thing about Kreitz, Mike, is he's done it to every field. He's gone to left, he's gone to left center, he's gone to right center. Now he needs a hit to right to uh, complete the every part of the ballpark cycle. Down and away from Colbert. That backside, the, the center field angle is where you can really see his back leg you know, he plants and, and, and looks at the plate, but his back leg falls so far to third, I continue to be amazed he doesn't just fall over during his delivery. His balance is incredible. Runner in motion, this one chopped foul. Cobra with nine. Uh, the Cowboys 15 saves this year as Seward retreats to first. Cobra also six wins. 
lot of innings for a guy who's made 26 appearances, 48 innings. I mean, you're talking about nearly two innings an outing. So he is not just a guy that's coming in to get you three outs, and obviously here he's not just coming in to get you three outs. He probably finishes this game. Holding opponents to a 2-0-2 batting average. He's only allowed three extra base hits all year. Runner in motion again. This one, fair, long throw across. Nice pick by Crane, and they're two away as Seward moves up. Really nice play by Gallier over there at third base on what could have been a tough play right at the bag because he not only had to navigate the ball, he had to make sure his feet were okay as he was stepping on and around the bag. Make sure that he could then plan and make a strong throw. Colbert got Kreitz golfing for that one. Daniel Midyet makes his way to the plate. Have a conversation on the mound here. This is the uh, pitching coach for the Cowboys, Corey Barton, making his way out. Former assistant at Louisiana Monroe. Joined Justin Hill's staff last year when Hill took over. I don't know exactly what he could be saying to him there. Hey, nice job getting it out. I get get another one. I. You know, that always, it, sometimes when pitching coaches come out, it surprises me. You'll see pitching coaches come out after a, 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 a pitcher records a strikeout or records, a, you know, gets a, a, I've seen pitching coaches come out in the middle of an, of an inning and it's 0-2 on a guy. And I always wonder, what is, he, what is he telling him? He's clearly having success. And what are you telling a guy, your closer at this point, Colin Kober, what are you telling him after he just got a ground ball out for out number two? Probably not, tell him that. probably not hit him. Daniel Mignette, plunked by the pitch. Second hit batter of the inning. One for Cole Prejean, now one for Colbert. And I'll say this. There is a rule in college baseball that if you don't attempt to get out of the way of a ball that hits you, you can be called back to the plate. I've seen it a bunch of times this year. That could have been a candidate for that. Midyet didn't move very, he didn't move at all out of the way of that pitch. Very easily could have been called back by our home plate umpire, Aaron Freeman. Yeah, but on the flip side of that, it's so hard even for a lefty to judge that angle. Sure. Which Cobra is throwing at that it, it's like looking in a mirror. Objects may be closer than they appear. As Kevin Carr takes one outside for a ball. Speaking of hot hitters, Carr, another one, three for three today. A wall-banging double back in the first. RBI single in the third. Base hit to left field in the fifth. Southeastern trying to get the lead back. This one struck well to right. James Cantu to the warning track, raises it down. That'll retire the side as Colbert gets the Cowboys out of the inning. We will head to the eighth. 2-2 Two -two tie here from the Southland Tournament on ESPN. Hey, Ken, where do you want these? Yeah, just throw them back there. Okay. Wow, what are all those? Peabody, Rogers Guild, Amy. Dude, you've been here like a week. Has it been that long? Always looking for ways to create a better viewing experience. So we started experimenting with a laugh track. Hi there, welcome to Sports Center. Back alongside John Anderson. I'm Jay Harris. If it helps get just one person to laugh at sports, then it's worth it. Birdie putt? Would it go? No. It's not without its flaws, but we think it gives the show a wider appeal. Returning with you here from Constellation Field, Sugar Land, Texas. McNeese and Southeastern Square at two. Cowboy fans getting into it. They're they not wearing their pitching. sunglasses correctly, by the way. Let them know. I'll, I might go tell them. We can see him from here. Right-hander Cade Grigne, the new pitcher here for the Lions, third hurler of the day. Takes over for Mason Klotz, who will be charged with a blown save, uncorking a couple of wild pitches. And Walking a batter in the seventh. 
But Grandier on to face a two, three, four hitters in the lineup here for McNeese State. Cade Grandier out of Destrehan, Louisiana, in the New Orleans area. He's just a freshman, 6'4", 219 pounder. But used a lot already, Mike. Four and one with a 2.16 ERA. 21st appearance in relief in 33 and a third innings as a, a freshman reliever. That is tremendous work. It also uh, closes the book on the starter, Jake Johnson, who will be pegged for both runs ultimately on the wild pitch by Mason Klotz. So Johnson ends up six and two thirds, seven hits, two earned runs, one walk, and five strikeouts. Klotz, two thirds of an inning. Walks one and, of course, uncorked those two wild pitches. So we go on to the eighth. Provenzano at the bat against Grania. Provenzano was up last inning when Andrew Guillot was caught stealing to retire the side. Strike one to Provenzano, who is hitless in three at-bats today. And Connor Lloyd on deck. Billy Summers to follow him. The amazing thing is the middle of the order for McNeese has not done much today. Giot's been strong at the top. A hit, a walk. He's been on base three times, but Provenzano's 0 for 3. Connor Lloyd's 1 for 3. And then behind him, Billy Summers and Connor Crane are both 0 for, 0 for 3. 0 for 6 with three strikeouts between them. Grigny just missing there. So the two through five hitters have combined 1 for 12 today here for the Cowboys. Soft chopper over the mound. Kreitz gets to it, but lost the handle. Just as I say that, base hit for Provenzano. Seems like Kreitz felt like he had to rush that a bit. Fielded it from the side, trying to get his feet set underneath him. And lost the handle. And I'm not sure he, even if he clean, fields that cleanly and gets a chance to make the throw, I don't think there's any chance he gets Provenzano at first base. It was just such a slow roller and spent so much time in the air going over the head of Grigny at the mound. Infield single for Provenzano, trying to keep him close. And now it's Justin Hill's turn to play a little small ball, I would imagine. Lloyd one for three on the day, has seven sack bunts this year. That'll get the job done. Second baseman Kreitz covering three to four on the put out as Provenzano, the potential go ahead run, moves into scoring position. Nice job by Connor Lloyd. By the way, we have a new second baseman I just noticed. Jacob Williams is now in at second base. Connor Kreitz, who was having such a fantastic ball game, sits, and Jacob Williams is now in at second base. It's incredibly tough to read the numbers on these jersey tops for Southeastern. So big bat taken out of the lineup. And the person of Carson Kreitz is Billy Summers takes a strike. He doesn't agree with it. Summers 0 for 3. Lined out softly to shortstop his last time up. Three Lions converging on this one. Oh, and what an over-the-shoulder catch by Kenan Menard. My goodness. I'm not in, he didn't catch that with his glove, by the way. He caught that with his glove and his bare hand. He basket caught that, but in both of his hands. That is tremendous. He used the bare hand to shove the ball into the glove. That's hashtag SC top 10 right there. A fantastic play by Kenan Menard for the second out as Connor Crane gets some words of wisdom here from third base coach Roberto Vaz. Menard was really, at, in the end, the only one with a shot at that one. Boy, did he make a play. Crane today 0 for 3. This one, and the gap. Run down by Julian Service. Lead off infield single, but the Cowboys can't do anything with it. And as we go to the bottom half of the eighth, this game still tied up at two. This is a Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN.
Yeah, one last question. Does that come in cream? What? What's taupe now? Uh-huh. Soon to be 40-year-old player. A-Rod wouldn't be able to play baseball all of a sudden? What does he have left? No credibility whatsoever. Is the circus over? I think he gets exposed a little bit. He's Alex Rodriguez. He's not Willie Mays. And if he can help them, he'll put him in there. He's got a lot to make up for. Here's some shit. I'm sure there are going to be booze. Rule 661. The best way to quiet the talk is to let your bet speak for you. Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Taco Bell. Rangers, Yankees, tonight at 8. Baseball rules on ESPN. Hey, fellas, you using bulk blenders? Last of the eighth inning, Southeastern. Put together a couple of runs early, but McNeese scored twice in the seventh, and we got a 2-2 tie in the last of the eighth. McNeese closer Colin Cobert came on in the seventh, hit a batter, but retired two, enough to get the job done. He works outside to Brett Hoffman for a ball. Hoffman singled in the fourth. Base hit sandwiched in between a couple of strikeouts. I want everyone to watch his back leg, his right leg as it comes down. And tell me how he doesn't fall every single time he throws a, a pitch. It is remarkable. And unlike a normal right-hander, you're not really in position to field a ball to the right side of the mound. He almost didn't keep exactly. his Exactly. I, I don't know how he doesn't do that every single time. His, his back leg comes so far out. Watch his back leg, the right leg. He... There, just every single time, he actually hit his knee, his left knee on the mound at that point. But his right leg so far, he has no balance, no base to balance on. Got one there, three and one to Hoffman. And yet he's one of the most effective closers you're going to find in the country. Just goes to show you, like golf swings, they don't have to all look identical to be successful. You know, the first, maybe even the second time you see him, it can be so distracting, it can work to his advantage. Absolutely. And especially, as, as you mentioned, as a right-handed hitter, that ball looks like it's coming behind your back to start with. But again, he can locate the, the outside fastball to the left-handed hitters. If you can do that, you can pitch effectively. I don't care what your windup looks like. Payoff pitch. Missed it. That is the first walk drawn by Southeastern Louisiana today. Had a couple of hit batters, but that's the first base on balls. Which is remarkable riches. considering they have 230 walks on the season. Pitch runner coming into the ball game here for the Lions. And that is going to be Kyle Setetal, their two-way player. Yeah, he doubles as one of the best pitchers in the Southland Conference while he's at it. Kyle set it to Junior from Denham Springs, and here's Kenan Menard at the bat. Set it to played a lot less in the field this year than he did in years prior. But very valuable in a situation like this. He's also thrown 92 innings with a 186 ERA this year. Right down the heart of the plate to Menard, who is 0 for 2 with a sack button. Had a magnificent play, and over the shoulder catch in left center field in the top half of this inning. And you've got to imagine with the type of small ball that Southeastern has played since J.R. Teague's got there, and now Matt Reiser continuing it. This is this has stolen base slash sack bunt written all over it, especially in the bottom of the eighth. That wasn't pretty, but it'll get the job done. Three to four on the put out. A little air underneath that one, but got down in front of Connor Crane at first. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to work. That's exactly what Southeastern does. Sacrifice bunts, sacrifice flies, 34th sacrifice bunt of the, uh, the year. They run, we mentioned, 90 stolen bases this year. Here's service at the plate. 
Hitless in three at bats. He lined out this second his last time around. Just ran inside. That's the other issue with that fastball from the right-hander Cobra. It has a bit of a tail on it, and it actually comes back into right-hander. So not only do you start as a right-hander watching him throw what appears to be behind your back when he releases it, it breaks into the plate, and then it comes back into you when it's the fastball. Big build is short. Lloyd slings and got him with a stretch by Crane. Up to third goes Setato. Two outs in the inning. So set it to all the pinch runner represents a potential go-ahead run here in the last of the eight. It'll be Chris Eads batting for the Lions. You mentioned Setatal has not played as much in the field. It's just his 10th appearance in the field for Southeastern. Caught the corner, strike one to Eads. If there is a tomorrow, got to figure Setatal is probably the starter. I would imagine so. Tate Cino got the ball yesterday. Jake Johnson today. That one dropping low to even up the count of the ball and a strike. A leadoff walk to Brett Hoffman by Colbert. Pinch runner set it tall was sacrificed to second by Kenan Menard. Moved up to third on the bouncer to short by Julian Service. Oh, he leaned into that one. I He's going to get his base anyway. I, I'm really surprised Aaron Freeman let him go to first base. He certainly cocked that knee back inside toward the plate. Do what you need to do to win a ball game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Watch that back leg. Just whoop, yep, just throw the knee out there. Make sure we get that contact. Justin Hill popped up on the top step over in the McNeese dugout to have a few words, and then now is working on his infield. Second hit batter by Colbert. Set it tall, 90 feet away from giving the Lions a lead for the second time. Winner of this game plays at noon tomorrow against the loser of the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Sam Houston game. Loser goes home. Will be the second team eliminated from the Southland tournament. We'll be down to six after this one. Here's Byers. Struck out his last two times up. Kyle said it all likely tomorrow's starting pitcher for the Lions and maybe can represent the winning run today. Bouncing ball to first, gobbled up by Crane. He'll make the play and the threat averted here in the last to the eighth. We will go to the ninth inning. The Cowboys and the Lions playing for their postseason lives. We're tied at two. This is the Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN. We recently hired a world-renowned chef in the cafeteria, but the only person who seems to understand him is Henrik Lundqvist. Henrik, what he said? He said today's specials are uh, pickled herring and blood corp. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a global company. It's about time our menu reflected that. I'll just have a hamburger. He's Alex Rodriguez, not Willie Mays. Does he have Is left? the circus over? Rule 661. The best way to quiet the talk is to let your bet speak for you. Sunday Night Baseball, Rangers, Yankees, tonight at 8. Baseball rules on ESPN. Right fielder, Quan Atkins. Well, earlier today, Northwestern State defeating Nichols as a demon survive in advance. We get a look at uh, demon right fielder Quan Atkins there in the uh, foreground making a diving catch to save a run late in the ballgame. McNeese State 
trying to move along as well. They're tied with Southeastern Louisiana here from Constellation Field in Sugarland, Texas. Two to two the score as we go into the ninth inning of play. Kate Granier stays on the hill for Southeastern Louisiana. His new third baseman walking away there is Taylor Schwanner, a freshman from New Orleans. Granier came on to Pitsy 8, gave up a leadoff infield hit, got the next three batters out. James Cantu at the bat to start the ninth. Down and away for a ball. Cantu has single, doubled, and popped out so far. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, by the way, Southeastern will be at the top of the order. Couldn't ask for a better scenario to try to win it in the bottom of the ninth. Granye, third pitcher of the day for Southeastern. Starter Jake Johnson lasted six and two thirds. This one bounced to first. Handled by Kevin Carr. He'll make the play by his lonesome. So Cantu retired, one gone here for Lewis Gilbo. Interesting, Matt Reiser has, in the course of this game, has actually changed two infielders. See, it, I, to me, it's incredibly rare to see a guy change infielders. He brought in Jacob Williams as a defensive replacement at second, and then, of course, Pinch ran Setatal at third, who's now Taylor Schwanner out there. Williams even coming off the bench, so still a threat in the lineup. He's hitting just an eyelash under 300 this year. Schwanner, though, just a buck 25 and limited chances. Schwanner will bat in the uh, five spot in the order. His turn may come up. Sharp line drive right center field. This one's going to get by service all the way to the warning track. Extra bases for Gilbo. It's a standing one-out double. His second hit. Great piece of hitting. Just found one on the outside half. Tailing back into him. Hit it a little bit on the handle, but nice job staying within himself on that swing. Didn't try to pull it, roll it over. Just went with it. Popped it the other way for a... Double, and so basically this is just operates as if you had a, a leadoff walk and a sacrifice bunt. Now you're in that situation. And Gallie, one for three today, singled his last time up. Here comes Matt Reiser, Southeastern Louisiana's head coach. The Lions have a righty up in the bullpen. There is no tomorrow for the loser of this one. There's a tomorrow. It's just going to be kind of sad. It's not going to be as much fun as tomorrow would be for the winner. That's for certain. It will be spent unpacking. Yes. And especially for southeastern Louisiana, if it's them, that is a long drive home. Right-handed down in the bullpen for southeastern Louisiana is Mac Severoller. And they're going to stick with Granye here. Soroller is the closer, it appears. Six saves, although no one really a little bit more of a closer by committee. You've got three different guys with at least two saves on the year. But not ready yet to bring in Soroller to try to finish this off. It's a good option to have, though. Certainly. Six saves on the year from him. First pitch breaking ball, 1-0. and oh. Gallie reached in the seventh but was put out at the plate on that fine defensive play by the pitcher, Jake Johnson, who recovered a loose throw on the warning track near the plate and just made a diving throw home to cut down Gallie. 2-0 and oh the count. That was the throw in from center to third. It got past the third baseman, rolled and hit the wall and came ricocheting all the way back out about halfway between the foul line and the backstop, where Johnson just happened to be. He chased it down as he grabbed it. He fell down and backhanded it to the plate in order to get the runner. Fantastic play. That seems like an eternity ago. It does. It feels like a long time. He's in the seventh. 
Flair to right, service on the move in hot pursuit. And that one is a foul ball. Service could not make the play in the corner. You know, the, the geography of this Parker is a little bit odd because midway down each foul line, the stands rotate and come back in, and there's a point where the wall comes back in. The, the field actually, the seats face back in towards you, faces back in toward home plate. I, it's very rare to see that. Because of that, it makes those corners a little bit more precarious. And difficult to see. Yeah, absolutely. Hot shot caught at third by Schwanner. Alertly, Gilbo retreats to second. Boy, they tell you when you, you enter the game, the ball's going to find you. And it found Schwanner, and he was up to the task. Nice reaction, glove side. Doesn't even have his pants dirty yet. He's making a great play on that. And that's the luxury the Matterizer has, depth. Speaking of, I believe we'll now see the closer. Now they're going to go Got to the to. bullpen here. So Roller will get the call for Southeastern Louisiana. Two to two tie here in the top of the ninth inning. McNeese with a potential go-ahead run in scoring position. We'll take a quick timeout. This is a Southland Conference tournament on ESPN. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah! I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We're never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. For all the nevers in life, State Farm is there. Another freshman put into a big spot here for Southeastern Louisiana. Max Aroller coming into the ball game here in the ninth inning in a 2-2 tie. And McNeese with a potential go-ahead run at second base. So Roller, part of a great baseball family, is Uncle Ben McDonald, former number one pick in the MLB draft, an LSU legend, had a great career with Baltimore and Milwaukee. And his nephew, so Roller. A tight spot here in the Southland Tournament in an elimination game. Southeastern Louisiana, the number one seed, they ran away with the regular season title. Wasn't even close in the end, but they are on the brink here in Sugar Land, Texas. So Roller getting loose. Andrew Giot do up here. Max Roller, 18 appearances, 26 innings of work, 15 hits allowed. Nine runs, eight earned. Five walks and 24 strikeouts, almost one per inning. He's holding opponents to a 160 batting average. And it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter for, nope, it will be Tool coming up to bat here. Cameron Tool, the number nine hitter, stepping up to the plate. He drove in a run with a base hit back in the seventh. Scored the tying run on a Mason Klotz wild pits. He's also walked and grounded out. Back-to-back -back freshman out of the bullpen for Southeastern. Matt Reiser, confidence in his young kids. Till takes a strike. McNeese has not led today. Southeastern scored in the first, got another in the third. Cowboys tied it in the seventh. That one drops out of the zone. Count even at a ball and a strike. Double-crossed the catcher Eads on that one. Eads was set up outside. 
looking for, I would assume, a breaking ball outside. Instead, that ball came in and finished well inside. Lewis Gilbo doubled. He is at second with two gone. Low again, two balls and one strike. And here again, it's to me, it's the same situation as we had before with Klotz. You bring a guy in, you know, this case he's a freshman. Granted, he's got six saves, but this is a completely different animal once you get to the conference tournament. He's never been here before. He's never seen this kind of pressure, knowing that this is an elimination game. It's an entirely different kind of pressure on these kids. Popped up toward the on-deck circle and heading out of play. He did pitch in the Connie Mack World Series. I love that reaction, Patrick. Just letting that one breathe for you, sir. Right. I don't know what he did there. No. Well, they got the job done or cracked under the pressure. It'd be a stressful situation. Two and two here to Tool. Stays alive. And there again, he's thrown almost exclusively breaking balls so far to Tool. He threw the fastball that was in the dirt. Everything else has been that curve. Tool has, looks like Tool's looking fastball, though. He's looking to just sit back and, and fight off the curve. I think he looks like he's sitting fastball right now. Got him swinging. So Roller with a big, nasty breaking ball. And we will go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Southeastern looking to survive and advance. This is the Southland Tournament on ESPN. Scott Van Pelt. Has joined the conference. Fellas, sorry I'm a little bit late. Hope I didn't keep you guys. Hello. Anybody there? Hello. Am I the first or what? Hello. Anybody there? They always cancel these things and no one tells me. Scott Van Pelt. Has left the conference. Rule 661. The best way to quiet the talk is to let your bat speak for you. Sunday Night Baseball. Rangers, Yankees. Tonight at 8. Baseball rules on ESPN. Last of the ninth inning, here from Sugarland, a 2-2 tie. Great work done here throughout the tournament by the local crew here in Sugarland. Michael operating camera three. Here come the Lions to bat against McNeese. Closer Colin Colbert, who has pitched an inning and two-thirds so far. He's hit a couple of batters and walked one, but has yet to surrender a hit. But the top of the order, due up for southeastern Louisiana. Give the Lions fans credit. They may not be mighty in number, but they are certainly mighty in voice right now. It's just like we mentioned, that this Lion program carries an expectation of winning with it. Jacob Seward takes a strike. So they believe 2-2 in the bottom of the ninth. That's their time to go ahead and win the game. The defending tournament champion, Southeastern Lions. Provenzano was shifted over, playing to pull, and in position to make that play as Seward is retired for out number one. So Jacob Williams coming up for his first at-bat of the day. He was a defensive replacement for Carson Kreitz at second base back in the eighth. Kreitz is out of the game. This is Williams, who's hitting 299. With seven extra base hits and 12 batted in. Senior out of Hobart. Swings at a changeup and pops it up. And they're going to call interference on this play. It was dropped by Colbert, but the batter is called for interference. He did not give way to Colin Colbert, who was trying to make the play. 
Got to make the effort to avoid the fielder here. Williams didn't even have his head up. Yeah, I will say in his defense, it certainly wasn't an intentional interference. He wasn't even looking. He was just loping to first base, probably very mad that he just popped out. But Cobra had a legit shot at that ball, and he has to have the opportunity to go make the play. Very solid call by Aaron Freeman, you see there. It's not just good enough to stay in your baseline there. You've got to make an effort to avoid the fielder. So that, uh, I believe, will be a P1 in the official record. Here's Daniel Midget with two outs and nobody on. Called strike down the heart of the plate. The happiest guys right now, Mike, Scott Malone of Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Matt Daggs from Sam Houston. No they doubt. Are, they are begging this game to go extra innings right now. They we'll, await. We'll give that out to the catcher in that last play. Guess he was the closest one to it. 0-2 to mid yet. Yeah, Malone and Deggs. Hey, these guys can go all day sure. for all they care. They, uh, they play tonight, by the way, at 7 o'clock. Corpus Christi and Sam Houston. Now scheduled for 7 o'clock. Loser of that game will face the winner of this game at noon tomorrow in another elimination game. Both of these teams facing the prospect of winning five games through Saturday. It's, been, it's happened before, happened two years ago at this park. Central Arkansas did the same thing, lost the first game, came back through the loser's bracket and won it. Ball and two strikes here to mid yet. But you have to have great starting pitching. You have to have a lot of relievers you can rely on to chew up innings. And in the end, your offense has to come through. It's, it's an offensive game once you get to Saturday if you've come out of the loser's bracket. Trying to get him to chase. Two balls, two strikes. Great season by Cobra. Stuart Holmes of Nichols, uh, Southland's relief pitcher of the year, but Cobra was not far behind, that's for sure. <laughs> Chopper to the dugout. Finally came back inside. Cobra's been away on both the 0-2 and the 1-2 pitches, trying to get Midyet to go outside and chase. Finally came back in, Midyet fouling that one off. Certainly don't want to play around too much with Midyet. Lazy fly ball to left, Gilbo underneath it, and we are headed to extra innings. Southeastern Louisiana and McNeese will give you bonus baseball when we come back to Sugarland. This is a Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN. McNeese State and Southland Conference baseball fans, your vote is needed. Help support McNeese outfielder Andrew Guillot by logging on to www.seniorclassaward.com and voting for the senior as the nation's top student athlete. Voting is open through June 8th, and you can vote up to three times per day. So act today and vote for McNeese's Andrew Guillot as this year's Senior Class Award recipient. I'm Andrew Guillot, and I approve this message. Fun game so far here from Sugarland, Texas. An elimination game between McNeese and Southeastern Louisiana. Tied at two heading into the 10th. Mike Wagenheim alongside the voice of the Northwestern State University Demons, Patrick Netherton. Uh, we knew anything could happen in this tournament, and here we are, the number one seed being taken into extra innings in an elimination game. And what we knew is that we would go to extra innings. When you and I get together, somehow that we knew that was going to happen. It would just be our luck this would happen. Free baseball. Andrew Giot at the plate, top of the order for the Cowboys, and Giot takes a strike 
from Max a roller gi up one for three on the day with an early single so roller struck out Cameron tool to end the ninth as a cowboy stranded the potential go-ahead run on second and here's the real issue Cobra already in as the closer working long innings now you've got Sorola the closer for Southeastern how many innings does he work if this game continues on that was like uh, demon head coach Lane Burroughs said earlier you do what you need to do there's no tomorrow if you don't get through today breaking ball Giot hits in the air to center Jacob Seward makes a play and there's one gone Here's the Southland's freshman of the year, Joe Provenzano. Got an infield hit back in the eighth. One for four on the day. Nice job by Sorola's predecessor, Kate Grigny. Inning in two thirds, a shutout ball. Gave up a couple of hits. Two and zero to Provenzano. You know, the interesting thing is both of these teams seem to have a very deep bullpen, especially McNeese. McNeese has a lot of guys who have double-digit appearances this year. And Cobra can go all day. You know, he's not a guy that throws 96 and is going to run out of gas. They have eight guys who have double-digit appearances out of the bullpen. So plenty of options for Justin Hill available. Got the 3-0 across. Meanwhile, you contrast that with Southeastern. They've only got six guys who have double-digit appearances out of the pen. We've already seen one who didn't. That was Mason Klotz who came in with just his eighth appearance. Provenzano tried to sell it. Aaron Freeman calls it a strike. Full count. Picked up by Carr, he'll shovel to Sorola for the three to one put out, and there are two gone. Kevin Carr making the play, two away here. Thus far today, only one error between these two sides. Connor Lloyd at the plate. Just missed. The Lions with a four, five, six hitters due up in the bottom half of this inning. Coburn, the closer for McNeese, sitting at 31 pitches now, so not necessarily stretched out too bad at this point. Of course, you're now. Again, you have to do what you can to win this game, but you're also running into, if, you, if you're thinking ahead at all, you're, you're getting close to where you may be burning him for the rest of the, the week, the rest of the weekend. Central Arkansas, HBU, coming up at 4 o'clock Central time, supposedly. <laughs> right now, we're still okay for 4 o'clock. 30-minute break in between games today. This one driven deep to left, but it'll settle in, and Byers makes the play. Lloyd gave it a ride, but it's a 1 2 3 top of the 10. Southeastern with another chance to win it. Coming up from Sugarland, this is a Southland Conference tournament on ESPN. That's the great thing about wearing pinstripes, right? It makes you look slimmer. That's why I love this uniform. Even on a bad day, I look great. Fellas? Suit? Yeah, my stylus hooked it up. Horizontal stripes. No, it looks great. Seriously. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. I have this condition. You know that feeling of deja vu? That's how I feel all the time. You you want to insert my consciousness into this guy's dead brain? We call it stitching. 
There are monsters everywhere, and we can stop them. Oh, no. Let's go get him. Stitchers premieres Tuesday, June 2nd, 9, 8 central, ABC Family. Now the Lions want to celebrate here, looking for a reason to do so. 2-2 two -two tie heading into the bottom half of the 10th inning. McNeese trying to force an 11th frame here. This is a Southland Conference tournament from Sugar Land, Texas, an elimination game between the Lions and the Pokes. Colin Colbert stays on the hill for McNeese. The middle third of the order coming up to bat for Southeastern, starting with Kevin Carr, who has three hits and four at-bats today. Yeah. Diving stop at first by Connor Crane. He'll make the play. Beautiful play by Crane. Had to play back towards. He was playing no doubles. A little bit shaded towards the line and came back to field his position beautifully on that hard-hit ball. And then the wherewithal to get up and get over the bag in time as well. Fantastic work at first base by Crane. And most importantly, the first out of the inning. The leadoff runner aboard is the worst thing you can possibly do against southeastern Louisiana. Well, against anyone, and, and especially in extra innings in the bottom half of a frame. This will bring up Taylor Schwanner, who entered the game a couple of innings ago. Actually, I beg your pardon, this is going to be... Kyle set it tall, but that looks like number 10. However, Taylor Schwanner took over at third base. Now set it tall. Unless the numbers were off. Now set it tall. Uh, set it tall went out the left field. There you go. We didn't get that change a couple of innings ago. Set it tall went to the left after pinch running in the eighth. So he actually made that catch a moment ago to end the top of the inning. Two and one to count. We'll try to get our defensive alignment straight. Schwanner is a third baseman, set it tall, the left fielder. So Byers is the one that's out of the lineup then. Correct. Sh uh, Schwanner's got to be in Byers' spot in the nines, nine hole, set it tall, batting fifth. Hot shot to third off the body of Gallier. Recovers and gunned him down. What an arm. My goodness, that was an absolute laser beam. Again, playing no doubles down the line. Backhand knocks it down and an absolute strike to get set at all. Impressive. Looked like that may have come up and got him in the face. Yeah, it did. He's holding its chin there, as you saw. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, there have been... got him, that was impressive. There have been one or two miscues in, that game, in this game so far. Outside of that, it has been a well-played, entertaining contest as Kenny Menard swings through the initial offering. Menard, with a couple of sack bunts today, is officially 0 for 2. Behind Cobra here at nothing and two. Well, Cobra's also getting some fantastic defense behind him. Already both corners, Crane and Gallier, making huge plays in this inning. Like you said, Cobra can go for a while. His, his motion is erratic and a little bit herky-jerky and, and sort of odd, but... He doesn't, he doesn't produce, it doesn't appear to produce a lot of stress when he throws the ball. The actual throwing motion with the arm seems pretty easy for him. It's all the rest of the window dressing that seems to be frenetic. He's had two outings of four more innings this year. That one's finally going to get through. Crane tried but couldn't get to it, and Kenny Menard has himself a two-out single. And there again, you're, you're playing the lines a little bit, trying to shade that way. Don't want to give up a runner in scoring position, and... I'll say this for the Lions, they've had a very good approach going the other way so far against Cobra. Julian Service 
Looking for his first hit. Three-time Major League draft pick. Ball one. Service went as high as the 21st round of the MLB draft. That was back in 2012, the pick of the Orioles. Count even at the ball and a strike. The winner of this game plays again tomorrow morning. They will get the loser of tonight's matchup between Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Sam Houston State. Scheduled for a noon start. I would be surprised if that happens. We haven't had a noon start yet in the first two days of the tournament. Menard scampering back to first. Two balls and a strike to service. Menard with an opposite field, two out single. He represents a potential winning run here. Cobra has already worked three and a third. Foul ball off the bat of service. And it would appear, although there is some activity now in the bullpen for McNeese, it would appear that Justin Hill may be committing to Cobra to perhaps finish this one off. At least perhaps another inning anyway. Wow. Called third strike. That is a perfect pitch. We will go to the 11th. Still tied in two from Sugar Land. This is a Southland Conference Tournament on ESPN. Hey, Tony. Hey, Scott. Just finished up the show. Guess I'm going to head on out of here. Cool. Go home watching some television or something. All right. Enjoy. Chase Freedom. The card is for the essentials. The cash back is for the fun. Chase, so you can. Season on the line here for the McNeese State Cowboys and the Southeastern Louisiana Lions. We head to the 11th inning here from Constellation Field in Sugarland, Texas, a Southland Conference Tournament, day number two, elimination time. Loser this one goes home. 2-2 two -two ball game, Max Soroller, Southeastern reliever, stays out there. Soroller has worked an inning and a third of perfect baseball so far. Late in this ball game, Southeastern Louisiana head coach Matt Reiser has put the onus on a lot of freshmen, and so far, so good. They clearly don't know any better. Clearly don't know that the situation is as, uh, as dire as it is. Lo win or go home. Ground ball to first off the bat of Billy Summers, knocked down by Kevin Carr. Flips to Sir Roller, covering for the first out, and Summers 0 for 5. So Roller's gotten a nice workout. Two of the last three have been him covering first base. One away here for Connor Crane. 0 for 4, a couple of strikeouts and a pair of flyouts. Drop curve for ball one. Central Arkansas and HBU coming up next here. Got that one in for a strike. Corpus Christi and Sam Houston will round out the day. Those are the games in the winner's bracket.
Two one. Beautiful, beautifully done. That's textbook. That is perfect. Completely caught Schwanner off guard at third base. Had no idea that was coming. Clinical bunt single for Connor Crane. If you're going to bunt for a hit, that's the way you do it. You don't reveal your intentions till the last possible second. You bunt it at the third baseman, Schwanner, who's playing back. He's playing in regular position, not anticipating bunt. And you have just enough speed, as Connor Crane does, to get to the uh, to beat that throw out. Really, not even an opportunity for a throw. He laid that one down so perfectly. Can two at the plate, and a couple of early hits, including a double. He's two for four on the day. Runner goes, and the ground ball on the right will send Crane from corner to corner. So McNeese has something cooking here in the eleventh. So you follow up a perfect surprise bunt for a hit with a perfect hit and run. That was hit and run all the way. Runner was going, a hanging breaking ball that Cantu is able to just flip right past between first and second. And the reason as a batter you go in that spot is because when the runner goes, the second baseman's breaking for second. Both the shortstop and the second baseman are both going to sort of move to the bag at second, leaves a big hole between first and second. And that was absolutely done to perfection by Cantu. So now Lewis Gilbo comes up in a monster spot here. Gilbo is two for four. He doubled his last time up. Single and scored back in the seventh. Best part of this for McNeese is the fact that with just one out, Sack Fly also gets a run home. And he's hit a couple very hard into right center field. The old step to third, look to first, nobody going anywhere. Work? Once in my lifetime. I've never seen it work before. Saw it work in the minor leagues, and the runner that got thrown out got cut later in the week. Uh, and rightfully so. They're already charging in from the corners. Runner breaks for second, and the throw faked by Eads. Now that's, you can't, can't make that throw. The only thing you can do with that is throw and have the, and the pitcher cut it off. You cannot risk the potential double steal to go, give the go-ahead run in the top of the 11th. But it also brings your infield in. So Cantu takes second. Two men in scoring position with only one out. They're going to intentionally walk him? Yep, they sure will. With first base open. And now Matt Reiser is coming out. And he wants to talk it over before they do anything. This, this is an interesting scenario. Sirola's thrown 27 pitches at this point. If you're going to intentionally walk, Gilbo counts now 1-0. It means you have to throw three more pitches. Typically, most coaches would leave the guy that's already on the mound to throw the intentional walk and then bring in the reliever to come in and try to throw strikes. But if you're potentially saving Sirola for later, do you then not throw three intentional balls here with him giving his arm an issue, or do you then go ahead and let him throw it, well, not the, bring in the reliever? You always have an option, although it would be unorthodox. Kyle Setetal is playing left field. If you needed somebody just to lob three pitches up there. Yep. Interesting conversation there after the catcher. Eads had already stood up and put the four fingers out to signal the intentional walk. They're going to pitch to Gilbo after all. 1-0 the count. Crane at third, Cantu on second. The infield drawn in. That's a nice little pitch. One ball and one strike. And obviously the key for Gilbo is hit something hard. Anywhere hard. Lewis Gilbo, Cowboy left fielder. And also, runners at second and third, Cantu and Crane need to be heads up. Even if it's hit hard, you're not necessarily breaking for the next base. You've got to be aware of what's going on. Yeah. 
Fouled off, two balls and two strikes. Sack fly is certainly something that Gilbo has to think about. But put it on the ground. If you put it on the ground, you need to hit it very hard. Make it a tough play for one of these drawn-in infielders. Pokes it towards short. Play at the plate. And he's out. Cannon Menard throws a strike to Chris Eads. And Connor Crane gone at the plate. Well, and again, you didn't need to break there. I know it, it's, a, it's a perfect throw, a perfect situation, but that's your shortstop guy who typically has your best, most accurate arm. I don't know that running is the right, is the right play there. I mean, Crane was dead to rights. Great job by Eads. And also like this, at the end of the play, Crane got up and gave Eads a little pat on the backside, telling him good job. The other issue is the runner at second, Cantu, does end up at third. So a potential wild pitch could change things a little bit. Here is Matt Gallier, one for four so far today. Chopper to third. Should do it. McNeese is held off the board. They call off the intentional walk and get out of the inning. We will go to the bottom of the 11th, still tied at two. Here, Southern Conference Championship Tournament on ESP. We're all experienced broadcasters, but sometimes we need a few pointers. Imagine your spine is attached to the chair. You're holding a towel under your armpits, eyes on the teleprompter. Don't look up to see the highlights. Look through the highlights. Last of the 11th inning, McNeese State in southeastern Louisiana. What a ball game this has been. And you see the numbers about as evenly matched a contest as you could have. An elimination game here from Sugarland, the Southland Tournament. Colin Culver, but McNeese closer stays in, and Chris Eads will lead things off here for the Lions. Eads is one for three. Gober has worked three and two-third innings so far. He's only given up one hit. He's gotten a lot of help from his defense as well. And he hit Eads for the second time. Eads leaned into the one last time around, but that one really had no chance of getting away from. And there again, Mike, remember, there is a new rule in college baseball this year. You have to try to get away from a pitch. And... I have seen, and I know you've probably seen the same thing, multiple times umpires calling back batters to the plate because they didn't attempt to get away from the pitch. Now there again, Eads leaned into the first one with the lower body. This time, he hangs out and just lets it hit him, made no attempt to get out of the way of the pitch. A pinch runner. This will be Drew Evans at first base. My only issue, uh, the only the reason I'm saying this, Mike, is that I just would like to see this be officiated a little bit more consistently it's been very back and forth sometimes you get an umpire who's calling guys back left and right sometimes you're getting umpires who are letting everyone go to first my opinion is i don't like the new rule if a pitcher makes a bad enough pitch that it hits you and you don't have to move you should get first base don't bail the pitcher out because you didn't try to get out of the way this will be brooks morse pinch hitting here for taylor schwanner in the nine spot Morse, a buck 90 hitter. Nine RBIs. So Evans, the pinch runner. Morse, the pinch hitter. Morse squares to bunt. Missed it. Strike one. 
Yeah, I don't know if there was much there, honestly, that Eads could do to avoid, even if he moved yeah, and toward I, the plate or away from it. But and, I understand yeah, what you're saying. I, my thing is I just want it called consistently. Let's let's get consistency in that rule because sometimes you see umpires who call everyone back. Sometimes you see umpires who let everyone go. Outside evens up the count. Morris with two sack bunts on the year. Schwanner only has 16 at bats this year and has not laid down a sack bunt, so that's why Matt Reiser pulls him out in this case to put Morris in. Morris is sophomore. Bunts it foul. Well, now what do you do? We've already seen Southeastern Louisiana lay a bunt down with two strikes. You risk, obviously, the foul out in this scenario. If you allow the bunt to stay on. They just pay me to run my mouth. I don't make those decisions. Don't want to. Call third strike. Now let me tell you, that was a painted outside corner fastball tailing back into the right-hander. It was that late break that got him right on the outside corner. So Morse a wasted at bat for a pinch hitter. Up steps Southland's player of the year, Jacob Seward. Singled back in the fifth. Time is called. Here comes pitching coach Corey Barton. This will be a strategic discussion here amongst the Cowboys. And again, two arms loosening in the bullpen for McNeese have been for the last two innings. But this does appear, it does appear that Justin Hill and, and his staff have decided to go ahead and make this all about Colin Cober. You see the right-hander, Corey Lapiz, up on the rubber loosening up. Also, it appears Ethan Stremmel who has been a starter for most of the year for Southeastern. He might just be tossing on the side out there as well. But this is going to be Cobra's game unless you know, unless this game gets into, into really, really extra innings. I think Cobra finishes this off for McNeese, win or lose. Cobra versus Seward. Runner breaks for second. The pitch swung on. Popped up. Does Gallier have a chance? He does. He makes a play and racing back to first is Avens. Oh, what a fantastic play. We've seen Gallier's rocket arm that time full sprint, locating the dugout in the process, then realizing he's got enough room, has to sort of circle back and make the grab. What a great play by the third baseman, Gallier. We have seen some tremendous defense from both of these teams today. So, two outs now. Jacob Williams steps in. Williams called for interference on a pop-up in the ninth in his first at-bat. So they traded the offense of Carson Kreitz for the defense of Williams back in the eighth inning. Did he foul that one? He yes, did. Yes, fouled it off. And again, just much like McNeese did in the last inning with Connor Crane trying to see if they can surprise the Cowboys. The Lions trying to surprise the Cowboys dropping down a little bunt. Bunt for a single. But credit McNeese in this half inning. Most of the time when the leadoff man is aboard for Southeastern, really bad things start happening. And the Cowboys have managed to keep him at first base. Runner breaks. And this one getting away from the catcher. Turning and holding at second base. It pins runner Drew Evans. My guess is that's a stolen base because he was going on the pitch. 
But the interesting aspect of that is because he was sliding, he was completely unaware that the ball had popped up. He, to his credit, got up very quickly and was looking. But uh, also a credit to Cameron Tool, the catcher, getting back there and making sure he was not going to advance to third. A 1-2 count to Williams. It's the first stolen base of the year for him, by the way. Two balls and two strikes. Now you also have gaps if you're southeastern Louisiana. Clearly very deep. But you have to bring in a new catcher as well as a new third baseman. Caught by Gallier at third once again. Give that man a gold glove. We will head to the 12th. Still tied at two. Matt Gallier saves the day here from McNeese State. This is a Southland Conference tournament on ES. It's hard to find an expert more dedicated than John Clayton. He's the consummate pro. We'll see how the 4-3 and the cover three work together. John Clayton with the lead. Thanks, Dan. Take care. Whenever we need a brilliant insight, he's available at the drop of a hat. Hey, Ma! I'll double my segment! We welcome you back to Constellation Field here in Sugarland, Texas. Defensive substitutions for the Southeastern Louisiana Lions. Nico Cuccia is now in catching. New shortstop and third baseman as the shortstop, Kenan Menard, has moved to third to play there. A new shortstop into the ball game for the Lions. Brooks Moore stays in to play short. A fantastic defensive effort at third base for McNeese State's Matt Gallier. Saves a run from scoring and keeps this one alive. Heading into the 12th inning. Mike Wagenheim had to depart the premises. Actually, his Nickel State Colonel team was waiting on him. They were nice enough to wait at the hotel for him to call this game. And, of course, when things got into extra innings, he had to leave. So... I will take you through the rest of things here. First pitch to Cameron Tool is in for strike one. A lot of defensive substitutions as Matt Reiser, the head coach of the Lions, trying to manufacture that run. He has left. Max Sorolla in, though, the closer. He's thrown a couple of strikes to Cameron Tool. Tool is one for three today. So we're here in the top of the 12th inning. That breaking ball stays high. Cowboys and Lions, both nearly identical line scores. Two runs, 11 hits for both. One error by Southeastern. Sorola was ready to go. Time was called by Tool. This game now will push the start of the next game back, the next game on the schedule. Central Arkansas and Houston Baptist, and a beautiful strike out there by Sorola. To get the inning starting, McNeese had a chance in the last inning. You see Sorola with that beautiful curve ball, getting the swing and miss. Andrew Giot will step in back at the top of the order for the Cowboys. Giot, the center fielder. Senior from Moss Bluff, just outside of Lake Charles. He'll line that one right at the first baseman, Kevin Carr. So two up and two down for Sorola. Very quickly here in the top of the 12th. 
And that brings up the freshman of the year in the Southland Conference, second baseman Joe Provenzano. Provenzano is one for five today. His lone hit back in the eighth inning. Fouls that one out of play. Winner of this game plays tomorrow at noon, taking on the loser of Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Sam Houston. That is the final game of today's action. Central Arkansas and Houston Baptist next. Scheduled for four. It'll be a little after that at this point. This one hit in the air to center. Ranging over Jacob Seward, and he grabs that. Three up and three down go the Cowboys in the top of the 12th. We head to the bottom half of the frame. Southeastern once again looking to win this ball game. 2-2 your score. You're watching Southland Conference Tournament Baseball. We're a global network, so uh, we rely pretty heavily on satellite technology. Overtime games in the NBA. I mean, that's awesome. Todd, Todd, I think we lost our feed. Roger that, Stan. Houston, we have video system failure. Uh, that's weird, because uh, everything's good on our end. We have no video here. Stand by. We got another one down, sir. It's pretty high-tech stuff, but we're a high-tech company. Orbit, give me a status on Sat 12, please. That's not good at all. Colin Cobra, the closer for McNeese, finally giving way. Corey Lapise will step in. Lapise, you see there, 6'4", 210, out of Houma, Louisiana. Actually outside of Thibodeau, home of the Nickel State Colonels, who were the first team eliminated here in the Southland Conference Tournament earlier this morning. Corey Lapise, no record on the year, 278 ERA, 25th appearance, 24th in relief. He has four saves. That's second most on the team behind Cobra. 35 and two-thirds innings, 19 hits, 11 earned runs, 42 strikeouts. Opponents are hitting just 160 off the right-hander Lapise, but a fantastic outing in relief by Colin Cobra. Coming in, ends up throwing... Four and two-thirds innings. One hit, no runs. One walk and two strikeouts. Does very strong work out of the bullpen. Cowboys coming back to tie things up with a two-run seventh inning after trailing two to nothing after three. For the Lions, three, four, five in the order up here. Daniel Midyet, the designated hitter, will lead things off. Midyet's one for four today. That one gets past the catcher all the way to the backstop for ball one. Lions had a golden opportunity in the 11th. Leadoff hit by pitch. Pinch runner, stolen base, but then a strikeout on a sack bunt attempt. A looking strikeout at that, followed by a pop out to third and a line out to third. Both of those fantastic plays by Gallier at third base. 1-0 misses outside as well, 2-0. somewhere in the greater Sugarland Houston metro area. There are Scott Malone and Matt Daggs are clapping in their hotel rooms watching this one go all the way to the 12th inning. And Lapise very close to walking the leadoff man. And he does. Four straight pitches all high. And Midyet is aboard. This is when Southeastern Louisiana starts to get the running game going. Midyet, 7 for 11 in stolen bases. And Kevin Carr will step in. Carr is 3 for 5. He doubled in the first, had an RBI single in the third, singled in the fifth. Last two times up against Cobra, he has gone down, flown out to right and grounded out to first. Carr comes in, your cleanup hitter. The senior from Chandler, Arizona. On the season, Carr batting 329. First pitch just high. 
There are five guys in the lineup for southeastern Louisiana who all have at least 31 runs driven in. And Carson Kreitz, the second baseman who was lifted earlier in the game, has 29. First strike thrown by Corey Lapiz. Comes in the sixth pitch, and it was high and in as well. So a gift of a strike from Aaron Freeman to Corey Lapiz. See if that settles in the right-hander. Another one high. Everything has come out of his hand high and higher. More activity in the McNeese bullpen. The Lions try to win this one in the bottom half of the 12th inning. First extra inning game we've had in the Southland Conference Tournament this year. Another one high. Three balls and one strike. Matt Reiser, head coach for the Lions, working through the signs down in the third base coach's box. And here comes Justin Hill, and Hill's going to make the move to the bullpen right in the middle of the at-bat. So with a 3-1 count, Justin Hill is going to lift Corey Lapiz, who does not record an out and gives up a walk. So Hill comes out and has a long discussion with his right-hander Lapiz. Didn't like what he saw through four straight balls to start with. Then finally recorded a strike on the second pitch that he threw to Kevin Carr. And now he is being lifted. Also, the training staff for the Cowboys on their way out to check on Cameron Tool. Tool looks like he needs a little bit of water. He's on his knee behind the pitcher's mound. Justin Hill called the entire infield in and Tool on a knee behind the new pitcher. Ethan Strimmel, who has come into the ball game. I'm not entirely certain what might be up with Cameron Tool. Tool is just down on one knee. Of course, Tool being the catcher, no warm up pitches thus far for Stremmel. Justin Hill is going to call in the entire umpiring crew because he is going to bring in the bullpen catcher to catch here. So we'll take a quick break, get everything sorted out as actually Tool is going to call off the bullpen catcher for McNeese. That's Garrett LaRosa. Tool will come in and be ready to receive warm-up pitches from Ethan Stremmel. Stremmel is 5-4 with a 4.54 ERA, 16th appearance, just his third relief appearance of the year. 71 and a third innings, 85 hits, 36 earned runs, 53 strikeouts. Opponents batting 307 off the junior from Lake Jackson, Texas. So Stremmel comes in, will be facing a three-ball, one-strike count. An odd spot to put someone in. But Justin Hill, after a four-pitch walk to start things off to Daniel Midyet, decides to go ahead and make the call to the bullpen on a 3-1 count on Kevin Carr. Runner at first base, bottom of the 12th inning in a 2-2 ball game. So Strimmel will not only inherit a runner at first, he'll also inherit a 3-1 count. Take a look at what's going on in the Southland Conference Tournament. On the side with the two-seed Northwestern State, Central Arkansas, Houston Baptist, both victorious in the first game. Northwestern State eliminated Nichols this morning, 4-3. to three. That means Northwestern State will take on the winner of Central Arkansas and Houston Baptist tomorrow at 9. On the other side, the one-seed Southeastern Louisiana and the four-seed McNeese both falling. They're playing now in the 12th. A&M Corpus Christi, Sam Houston play tonight at 7 p.m. So Ethan Strimmel ready to go. Right now, graphic tells you it's at 4 p.m. Central time but with at least 30 minutes between games. Even if this game ends right now, we're not getting off at 4 o'clock for the 
4 o'clock game, Central Arkansas and Houston Baptist. So Carr steps in, 3-1 pitch right in there for strike two. So tough for Ethan Strimmel to step into a 3-1 count. A runner at first base is Daniel Midyet. A four-pitch walk issued to him. Payoff pitch. Fouled out of play. Lions got the lead in the bottom half of the first inning. Scoring a run after a one-out triple and then a double behind it. Then in the third, getting a run, a one-out single, and then two more singles behind that. Then have been blanked since then. Meanwhile, the Cowboys scoring two in the seventh. The Lions trying to win it in the bottom half of the frame. Runner goes, hit and run, executed absolutely perfectly. Midyet will go first to third. And the winning run is 90 feet away for the Southland Conference regular season champion, Southeastern Louisiana Lions. Could not put that one down any better. Hit and run, second baseman vacates the area. That ball hit the other way into right field. Perfectly executed. Midyet on his horse all the way to third. Carr holds up at first, and now runners at the corners with nobody out. Lions looking to try to finish this one off. Kyle Setatal will step in. The only guy that matters right now is Daniel Midyet at third base. Infield in for the Cowboys. Swing and a miss, beautiful pitch down low for Strimmel. So Strimmel gives up a base hit on the hit and run. And again, that's what the Lions do. They love to play small ball. They love to sacrifice hit and run. Very good executing team in those scenarios. That one fouled back out of play. Midyet with very good speed at third base, so anything hit to the outfield, you've got to imagine Midyet's getting sent. Kyle Setatal, who has just 16 at-bats all year, grounded out his last time up, came in as a pinch runner and stayed in to play left. 0-2, and that will win the ball game for the Southeastern Louisiana Lions. Plenty deep. Throw on the way home. Great throw. Safe. And Southeastern Louisiana survives and advances. The one seed Lions get the sack fly from Kyle Setatal. His fourth RBI of the year. Probable starting pitcher tomorrow. And the reason he's starting tomorrow is because he gets the sack fly RBI to win it 3-2 to two in 12 innings for the Southeastern Louisiana Lions. Big celebration out in center field as the one seed regular season champion wins its 42nd game of the year. And regardless of whether Southeastern Louisiana wins the conference tournament, I do believe they will likely end up in the NCAAs no matter what happens. A fantastic finish here in the bottom of the 12th. Kyle Setatal with a great hook slide from Daniel Midyet at third. Thanks to Mike Wagenheim, I'm Patrick Netherton saying so long from Constellation Field, Sugarland, Texas. The final score in 12, Southeastern Louisiana 3. McNeese State 2 to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Go to, e go to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. He's Alex Rodriguez, not Willie Mays. Does he have left? Is the circus over? Rule 661, the best way to quiet the talk is to let your bet speak for you. Sunday Night Baseball, Rangers-Yankees tonight at 8. Baseball rules on ESPN.